on the list. Uh, can we switch over to our list? Mm-hmm. I think it was. Oh, Alex. the last person is Alex. Um, Alex is a local judge, and he has done several of these through our Soap Let Us Presents affiliates. Yep. Um, so he has some experience, and he's done pretty well on those. So, yeah, we're excited to see how this draft goes with a handful of new drafters and some stalwarts. Yeah. And it looks like so we're yeah. Oh, it's our little Lotus. So we did have an interesting thing happen here. Mm -hmm. Um, Normally, when we draft our seats, uh, ancestral, so predictable, we normally draft our seats, one and two goes, and then eight goes. This time we had one, two, three go, and then Brandon had the fourth pick, and rather than picking eight, he took four. Okay. Which is an interesting, you know, passing the wheel for there. Oh, Emerald for Adrian. That's. That is that's interesting. That is pretty insightful over any of the blue power that was available. Right. Now, I know so Cody's plan, yeah, he's gonna take the time walk. Mm-hmm. Um we can expect the Oko from him on the comeback. Okay. So Sam mixing it up with the Pearl over the jet, which is usually where we see Sam. Right. Which is good. She's she's changed up. Yep. Um one of the things we've seen a lot lately is it used to be like Lotus Ancestral Sapphire. But as the other colors have become stronger, blue sapphire just kind of falls where any one of the other moxes, you know, it just what they want. It makes sense. Um, it seemed like the trend for the last couple of VRDs was there's a lot of blue soup decks and people kind of infighting. So it might signal that people are kind of stepping away from blue as well. Right. We've been so we're going to get aggressive. somebody, one person with a double mox, probably. Oh, uh, well, Alex uh, Jet is still bringing in Ruby. Yep. Yeah, so Soul Ring movie strong. Oh, Demonic Tutor. Sapphire and Tutor. Oh, Sam for going the jet oh, the tinker. That, that is going to be interesting from Sam. Yeah. Sam uh, usually, so, go ahead. from what I've seen, plays this kind of very honest form of magic. Sam yeah, wants to sure. disrupt your hand and play to the board. So Tinker is very interesting. Yeah. There's the Oko, like so, you predicted. Yeah, Brandon and I are very big, and we have an article forthcoming on uh, the value tinker package, uh, where it's not about combo. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. We still have a jet out there. Yes. Well, we saw Brandon pick up Fast Bond, and Adrian picks up Collector Oof, which is interesting. That seems very high for a Collector Oof. That's super high. This is Adrian's first time. Okay. Right? So he just saw a whole bunch of emeralds, a whole bunch of fast mana. And he said, okay, I want the oof. I would... <sighs> Collector Oof does not seem, seem like the f- correct first card for a Selesnia stacks or Taxes deck, but I would like I to know. see that list take shape. Uh, Brandon's the- probably going to end up, unless he audibles, mm-hmm. these are the two I know, yes. in something similar to he did on Discord, a mono green Eldrazi. Okay. Um, so big green dudes and fast mana. So, so Crypt and Fast Bond play into that. Yeah, I, I'm used to seeing Mono White Eldrazi out of Legacy, and in Modern, I play Mono Green Tron sometimes. What exactly went into the Mono Green Eldrazi list, aside from, um, like, World so Breaker? Fast Bond, uh, and then he gets a lot of stuff like Hex Drinker, which is big mana. Oh, okay. Channel. So it's okay. really the, the ability to like channel out and play um, a reality smasher okay. and a Phyrexian metamorph on the same turn, for example. Okay, so it's it's green for the big mana that lets you get to the Eldrazi. It's not necessarily yeah. green to play a lot of. Oh my the, god, is Max getting Black Lotus Jet, and, or have they all just forgot Jet exists? <laughs> okay, okay, there it is. This is the first. We have, I don't think we've ever seen Lotus Mox. Yeah, that I've seen Emerald Wait, floated. Welcome. I've seen Emerald floated, but oh, I've never Jet seen Tomb. It. Yeah, I so Tomb used to be around like an eight to nine, ten pick. It's really moved up recently. Uh, I'm a big advocate for a three four Tomb, and it's it's so powerful. So. Fast mana is definitely something that cannot be overlooked in most of the decks that people are going to try and play, and it's nice because it's fairly agnostic. It doesn't put you into anything. Yeah, but Tomb has definitely moved up. All right. 
Okay. So we got a lot of mana so far. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we're either looking at Gruul or Abzan right now from Adrian's and seat. If he had taken Thought Seize in the two seat, um, that wouldn't have been surprising. Though no. passing Jet when you're going to take Thought Seize is painful. Uh, so Tino, Adrian's a new player. He's this is his new. I mean, he's an old grinder and a very talented grinder. Wins a lot of RCQs, etc. But uh, this is his first BRD. So, yeah, I'm very curious to see what kind of take takes shape here. And I'm usually in the eight seat. That's where we see, or historically, you've seen like the quote unquote artifact deck. It's not a tinker deck. It's just like workshop style it could be taxes it could be beats it could be um walking ballista combo but we have no immediate red drafter nobody took the ragavan so i would take ragavan on this backpack that would be my expectation from uh strength minus not the card he's looking for strip minus yeah okay brandon's a big strip mine advocate i he always loves some strike mine yeah uh with fast bond it makes sense you now have Three is it three crucibles with the card yeah. from mom or not mom? So this one. is interesting. Cody wrote in with me, and in our conversations, he was confident he was not going to get Oko and Force to Quill, right? Uh, yeah, and he gets it. <laughs> well, that is it, might be okay. that, that people are looking what? to move away from these blue soup decks. Mason's not here to really represent the kind of like tempo list that we usually see out of that seat. Uh, Jeff is right, here so, to eat up a yeah. lot of blue cards. Mike is, as I said, he is a doom, old school Doomsday and Storm fan. Um, so Demonic Tutor and Vampiric Tutor makes sense for some kind of doomy, stormy combat list. Uh, absolutely, but there are also value cards. I didn't want to say anything after Demonic Tutor because, you know, again, still fairly agnostic. But yeah, we are looking at something in Demir. It could even be a Thassa's Oracle package. We would see what is a consultation. Yeah as well coming soon out of that seat. Yeah. Um, but we didn't actually get to talk about the value uh, tinker package. So if you want to... Oh, yeah. So the value tinker package, like, is not about getting your time vault of mm-hmm. things. It's about cards that can answer things. So, like, my current one I'm running is, like, Portal to Phyrexia. Yes. Um, Chromatic Ori, which then can ramp you immediately into a Planeswalker. Yes. Uh, Phyrexia and Metamorph to copy something else. Uh, God Pharaoh statue. So it's more like a controly lit thing where you're not just trying to combo out. Oh, we so late Urza Saga at this point, or, or right around the same spot. I think so. so yeah, Red and Sticks and Saga. Still no Ragavan. No, it's still no Rag. Dark Red still signaling combo. Yes, Mike is. De- I believe Mike is definitely going to be on some kind of top combo deck right. for sure now. No Rags yet, man. The little monkey is somewhere going. Ooh, 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 come on, man. But still, this is something I noticed in 10. We did not have a red-based aggressive deck, at least for a very long time in the draft, and Lightning Bolt yeah. was floated way down the list. Yeah. And okay. Lightning Bolt, it really moves around a lot. Oh, point. yeah, for sure. Uh, so, Sam's got a strong draft so far. Yeah. And I love this because she's expanding her wheelhouse, right? Like, she's been on this, gr- hey, I'm doing black, I'm doing yep. green-black. Um, this is a strong package. Tinker for um, Kodatha, or, or not Kodatha, um, the Calder Complete? Calder, yeah, Calder yeah. Complete. Like, do not underestimate Tinker for Calder Complete nope. as, it is, as a secondary to Stoneforge. It's a, a, a fabulous package. Sam is actually moving into my wheelhouse when it comes to modern. I'm off a grid and I play a Bant Stoneforge list with Teferi Time Raveler and Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah. Oh, Cody steals Cody. Brandon's hex drinker. Cody knows this. He lays the dick on the table. Oh, right? okay. Like, he knows Brandon's going to take hex drinker in yep. the four to five spot. So this is what happens when you draft with a lot of the same people over and over. Right? Yeah. For like, sure. you know. So Cody had a conversation with me that day. He wanted to know who was in because he needed to know where to value Bitter Blossom because he okay. knows Sam is often drafts Bitter Blossom. Yeah. Uh, um. So this time, obviously, Sam's not going to. Yeah. But like right there, he's like, Brandon advocates for a four or five. Okay. Uh, Carl the Great Creator, great for Brandon's deck. Fantastic. So yeah. Adrian just signals what he's going here. 
Yes, I think Adrian is. If anybody who's seen this, the Yawgmoth deck in modern yeah. looks at this draft, I think they're going to understand where Adrian is going. It is a value kind of uh, combo deck. No, uh, time is time vault on the still on the table? I believe time vault still on the table. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, so Adrian again, this is showing his news to VRD. Um, he got recruited this last week, so I don't even know how much he's looked over other stuff. Um, but like Yogg's one that you could get far, far later on average, right? I, this feels like Adrian knows the deck in modern and is now just powering it up and making sure that they can get their pieces for the combo yeah. they understand and is are going to lean on their play skill more than anything yeah. else. Uh, and so Adrian's I, a really successful local grinder. <laughs> he's uh, He's a lawyer. He's a bright guy. And he's a good technical player. To be fair, Adrian's doing a lot of what uh, what I've been doing since I started learning about VRD and working on the cast, which is just find a theme that I like and try and find the upgrades and then create a pick, uh, pick order from it. We meant, we were talking about the value tinker package. That's actually something that I've come to embrace as well as I keep refining a Zerda deck. Um, but in that kind of deck, I can forego tinker for transmute artifact which is something right. similar but it gets me my combo package there so that's something that came in time too was looking at this list like adrian is and saying okay cool here's my base list here are my immediate upgrades and then over time realizing that i could actually forego some of those picks for something else that's a little more unique this is an early mistress workshop um workshop is a card that if you are in the pure artifacts list is amazing Yes. But no one else really wants it because you're not in the pure artifacts list. Okay. Uh, library. What's your thoughts on library, Peter? I think this is a bog standard overall. To me, this signals a deck from Max that's probably going to be a little slower, a little more plotting than what we might expect. Ancient Tomb and Library can play against each other, though, which I'm not entirely excited about. You want to open on Library, play it and pass. But if you open on Tomb, and you start making accelerated plays because of that, then library drops in value later on in the game. This is, um, if you want library some serious, uh, Caleb Moore has here. some great library theory. Right, library stats here are a little misleading. Um, that 73 out of 80 is fine, and they're usually in round eight, but yep. a lot of that's old data. Uh, of recent, there are times where library just doesn't go. When it's amazing, it's amazing, mm -hmm. but... I think this is Max showing his vintage experience bias and just saying, like, well, library's library, not realizing that in this format, it's outside yep. of the pure control decks, it's only okay. So I want to pick, a, a, pick out on a word you said, vintage experience, right? It's not just vintage as the format, but also vintage cube is very much different from vintage rotisserie. So if you're bringing in vintage cube knowledge to this, library is very much overvalued in that because it can overperform very easily in vintage cube right. versus vrd so not the just so we got a nar set mm -hmm. um so showing some wheels possibility here okay now, i was wondering where this was going to go workshop still confuses me though yeah no for sure sylvan's solid there especially with brandon so brandon is now recalculating in his head what he's going to do yeah uh i probably know there's no drafter i know as well as brandon we talk theory all the time. Yep. And Brandon, nope, he's still on his plan. He does not like losing Sylvan and Hexdrinker. Yeah. So I was curious, would Eureka play in Brandon's list if... Eureka is in Brandon's list. Okay. Yes. But you can float uh, that pick. The, our score tells yes, you. know I agree. Right. On Discord, you are the consistent uh, picker. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Shot uh, the ears. A base of level interest of plan of recent of recent drafts. The two big missing are Ragavan and um, our Minsk and Boo. Really, Minsk and Boo have been picked that highly. Oh in the my! Last draft? It is probably the second best plane blocker right now. Okay. After Oko. I wonder if Alex is going to pick it up, wanting to get Ren in six. Uh, I would see. Like Alex would be good for it. But I don't know if he has enough familiarity to see it. Right. Okay. Understood. I'm curious, the Ren and, Ren and Six being a, yet another version of Crucible, if there's going to be any infighting between Alex and Brandon on those effects. If somebody's going to, Brandon has Strip Mine, Alex has Ren and Six and Saga. 
Brandon will run at just a value strip mine. Oh, okay. Like Brandon is not afraid of a no recursion value strip mine. Um, I mean, his deck in the current Discord 20 has just a value strip mine. And he beat me with it last night. Okay. <laughs> I, oh, Cody. So Cody did not expect to be able to pick up force here. Nope. Oh, yeah, that's right. We mentioned the free counters earlier. So force oh, will went. Will. So Will is a great one here because this is a card that doesn't see that much VRD play anymore. Um, so again, Mike's new to VRD. So this definitely shows the like, hey, I'm thinking of the legacy things yes. that we often do. What you're going to be doing with Will is a lot more unique than what you're going to be doing with something like Past in Flames. Mm -hmm. And seeing Will over Underworld Breach also kind of masks that play later on, but Mike doesn't seem like he's going to move into Grixis for an LED breach package. I like Alice's picks here. I don't know about the vault. That's interesting. That might have uh, there's the LED. Snake from Sam. I feel like. What'd you say? I feel like Time Vault there is just a snake from Sam. Yeah, I don't I don't, I don't think he's snaking it. I mean, I think he just saw it open and it's got too much power. But in the <laughs> It does seem odd to me. There, there are all the keys are still floating. Yeah. So there's I mean, still the, the thing about vault is all you have to ha all you have to have it. There's too many. There's so many things that just work with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that's fair. Yeah. You so, need a way to find borrower it. Borrower has been a uh, moving up the list lately. Uh, it's such a powerful card. Now, have we been seeing that in all kinds of lists, or has it been yeah. something more like this? Okay, so it's not just tempo anymore. It's just playing all no, over. No, not just tempo. I'm currently running it as just an answer uh -huh. in, like, blue-white artifacts tinker. Got it. Okay, so there's the first wheel out of Kyle. Yeah. Officially staking their claim on a plan That's right now. One. Yep. Brandon picked up Ragavan. Yeah. Uh, so, again, Adrian showing his hand here as an experienced player, but not experienced VRD. Death right. Not great in VRD as much because you don't have the consistency of fetches. Correct. Even if the, even if Adrian were to start the run on fetches, there's a chance they only end up, end up with two to three if everybody picks up on the run. Yeah. Uh, so Brandon, there's Brandon's audible. He lost the hex drinker. He yep. lost the Sylvan. So he says, "Okay, I'm going to go red green." Okay. Expect him to take um, Minx Kimbu on the way back. It's on the way. Okay. That was going to be my question. If that's what, what yeah. we could expect there. No. Yep. Yeah. Brandon knows Minx Kimbu. <laughs> okay. So is this going to be like a, a lower to the ground kind of gruel build, hovering around? He's going like... to go red green aggro. With yeah. Okay. Red green Eldrazi. Oh, okay. Uh, does that? Hmm, I can't remember the name of it. The the threatened. The threatened Eldrazi. Yeah, I mean, he's just going to have big like thought not seer, and he's going to have it's going to be red green haste. Yeah. Doesn't the there it is? Uh, Mister Wizard brought it up for us. Obligator. Okay. I doubt he'll do that. Okay. That's but he might. Point. You never know. I mean, Brandon's knowledge is deep. Yep. Uh, Pointed out, Hold Breacher is still open as yeah, I well. I would expect that next. Yeah. I would, Hold Breacher also well. goes 2 3, so it'll be a late Breacher. Yep. Yeah. Noah, Noah's Red Green Eldrazi was really good. And of course, it had Ragavan and it had the um, Minskin Boo. Minskin Boo. So Max picks up the so wheel. Chrome Mox and Wheel. So he's still establishing mana. Um, I mean, he could end up in a reanimator again with this. It is quite he could end up in a lot of places. Oh, mystical over the breacher. Breacher still floating. Yeah, that's interesting. Mystical highlights. He's got some other idea going on, right? Like it's not pure wheels. Yeah, no, I'm curious to see. Oh, sorry, Max. Max's two picks just kind of like broke my brain for a second. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with Max's draft right now with Ancient Tomb, City of Traders. Library, Chrome Mox. There's so much yeah. working against the library pick already. And there's there's Minskin Minskin Boo. Yeah. That I just don't understand. Words on that. Yep. <laughs> I just don't Mr. understand Wizard what that's going it. right now. So Mr. Wizard is the great fixer. He'll fix it for us. Oh, there were more words. I thought it was just the Yeah, there's there's extra words there. there. Yep. All right, so what's Cody going to grab here? There's a lot open to Cody, and I wonder if there's there would be a flex into Sultai for Leopold. 
or something similar. Uh, Leibold's on his list, but he can grab no one's. He sees no one's in that color, so he can grab that forty-six pick. Yeah, just float it. Yeah, and he knows that. I, I do know Leibold was on his initial draft. Okay, so this makes sense there. We have Thoughtseize out already, but we don't have IOK going. I assume those are on Adrian's list over Cody's. And that's why he's sitting here thinking right now. He's going, okay, what do, what do I need to grab off this list? Because he's got a lot of weird stuff that no okay. one's going to contest. Got it. Do any of them give up the goat on what they're trying to do? Uh, yeah, I mean, I know what he's trying to do. I'm going to save it till we see one. Okay, okay. So similarly, Cody wants to do that as well to keep the rest of the draft in the dark. Yeah. Cody is um, amazing at picks 20 through 46. Fair? Yeah. I could see a Birds here. From Cody over yeah. over Noble? Uh, yeah, because he, he's going to be in Bug. He's going to be in Sultai. Okay, okay. Got it. That makes more sense then. Very curious what comes out of this. Sam as well. Sensei's Divining Top was not a pick I expected for this deck. It slows the game down a little bit. Definitely plays oh. into the plan. One thing you got to remember with Sam, right, is so her experience comes from BRD, but her experience also comes by proxy of Brandon. Yeah. So as she explores new lists, they're always heavily influenced by the things that Brandon does. Got it. And uh, there we go. That's smart. Misty. Okay, so this might uh, start the run. So Sam will... I expect her to grab Monastery Mentor because Brandon oh, was the okay. top mentor yep. and she's seen him be successful with that. Yes. So she okay. watches him very closely. She's an amazing student at seeing what works. Yep. Oh. So since she's seen that work, I would expect that in that. Yep. And we missed the LED pick from Mike who wheels Underworld Breach. Yeah, no, I, I did not miss that earlier, but it was I did. it's a good one there. Yep. And again, it shows he's going he's gonna try the storm package. Yep. Will he be the person to break it? Yep. And in, was it VRD 10 or was it the friends and family draft where Brandon showed the value brain freeze package? Brandon always has the value brain freeze package. (laughs) That was six, three, nine, 17 (laughs) discords. (laughs) But staking claim on Gruel now, I doubt we'll see somebody pull the brain freeze trigger. Yeah, he stole brain freeze in the fans and family from Mark. Made that cry. Uh, yeah. All right, Peter, I'm going to step to the restroom here for a second, so I'm going to leave you on solo, okay? Works for me. So right now we're waiting on Alex's back-to-back picks on the wheel, and in theory, this should give us a little more insight into their plan. We've seen some fast mana and some value with Ren and Six in the Urza Saga. With the beginning of the run on the, quote, fetches, we might just see a duel into a fetch or vice versa to keep that going. There could be some evaluation of Alex against Brandon's list to see if they might pick up a crucible effect here, thinking that they're going to be in contest with Brandon for those. So, oh, Lelia. So that is the three drop from Commander... 2018, 2019, a fairly aggressive card. We usually see this more in aggro lists. Ren and Six can definitely play into that a little bit, but I would have expected Alex to then have also taken Ragavan instead of uh, Urza Saga or Time Vault on that wheel. So this pick is going to be interesting. Oh, Lelia is not the pick? Maybe that comes later with no other dedicated red drafter right now. We'll continue to float it. So, um, okay, we are going with Layla. So usually paired with this are, uh, like I said, what is going on? Uh, lower to the ground, uh, aggressive cards. Not Scrappy Scrounger, but the, uh, the other one, the little pulseful guy from... Aether Revolt. The one that you can, you just exile cards under. Okay, what if Foothills into L- Lelia? So this continues the run on the fetch lands, like I mentioned. I almost would have expected a double fetch land pick here for Alex. There it is, Ball Mac Carrier. That's usually what we see paired with uh, Lelia for aggressive decks. Mike is able to get his brain freeze before anybody else, so that continues the Underworld uh, Breach package. So we could 
see Thassa's Oracle come out of Mike as well, Underworld Breach, and Brain Freeze do tend to finish a game on their own, though if Eldrazi are being drafted, you like the ability to Brain Freeze yourself, exile your deck, and then win via Thassa's Oracle. Sam kind of staking her claim on, I think, an Azor Tempo deck. We might see a flex into Jeskai if Lightning Bolt continues to get floated. With ha Othalia Heretic Cathar on board and or the two mana value Thalia, Thalia, it does kind of put your opponent in a quagmire. They are very, let's see, what's the right word here? Not remiss, but uh, they are in a very difficult spot to get out of and allow you some time to kind of build your engine. SDT does not play well with two mana value Thalia, though, so we might, we may not see that draft. It all depends on what Sam wants to do with Divining Top and Sam's overall plan with this list. If my expectation is correct and based on what Brandon was saying versus the St. Louis City v. City draft, is this going to be very much a Stoneforge Mystic deck? We will see Cauldra complete. We will see Batter Skull, probably two of the swords. And if we see GTA, that seems to me like Sam is going to represent something that is a little more aggressive and low to the ground that can kind of beat face faster. A deck that she played, I think, two VRDs ago was Black White in a very similar fashion. Instead of controlling the, the stack or the board a little bit with Teferi, they were controlling the hand with Thoughtseize and IOK, -okay, but stayed with that Stoneforge Mystic package, which is one of the most powerful packages you can have that early in a game for a BRD draft. The world is your oyster, and you can basically just make somebody's life miserable however you want. And continuing the run on fetches, we see Polluted Delta out of Cody, but we have yet to see any dual lands or any of the Triumphs move yet. So that might be on the wheel back once all the blue fetches are gone. People might start moving into, oh, or Brandon, just straight with the Tiger. All right. So Lele Blade Reforged, super strong, mm -hmm. second best red creature. After Ragavan? After Ragavan, yeah. Yes. Uh, Thalia, nice. Delta, so, uh, Cody's still doing well the whole with creature. the fetches there. Out of Kyle. So what I was talking about with Lelia is usually we see that with Bowmat Courier. We usually see kind of a more aggressive red deck paired. Fairly at this point. I mean, she's just such a strong red creature. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Bowmat's nice if you want to go a little more aggro, but she fits really well in mid-rangey stuff. Like, Mox Ruby, Ancient Tomb, Layla is ridiculous. Okay. All right, so Max picks up Emrakul, the Aeons, Torn, and Channel on the wheel, which is where the big mana is going to go. I, yeah. Now, that doesn't, aside from Channel, which played against Brandon's plan early on, do you think mm -hmm. that played against, continues to play against him? I mean, if he was or still going to go the Channel, I mean, he might. So he's got Thought Not Seer and probably an early Seer, mm -hmm. but. And Karn, because he also likes channeling into Karn. Yep. He might just kick out of that and go into even more red green aggro. Okay. Comet uh, Stellar Puff. So now we are in yeah. he's Naya. Naya. So he's he switched it up. This is what Brandon's really good at. He he can read the writing on the wall and make a change. Comet is very strong. How how is Comet played in the six trash? Just good i mean it, it's hard to explain it's just like it creates so much value mm -hmm. and it does damage it removes creatures it you know returns stuff to your hand it does aggro you know it's it's, it's just an aggressive piece that is hard to explain is until this, you see it until you die to it yeah I, I i definitely died to it twice in uh in infinity draft same same round it was Rolling, I'll tell you what. Uh, is Comet the kind of planeswalker you want to slam before you've taken over game, the game to use to take over the game, or is it one you want to slam after you've taken over the game because it takes a little while to get there? I think it's versatile enough to be whatever. Okay. Yeah. It can it can cause you to take over the game, or it can steal, steal your deal. Yeah. I think you probably a little more on the early side. You want it before. But, I think it's a little better at taking over than sealing the deal because mm -hmm. sometimes you hit the recursion. Yes. When okay. you are trying to seal the deal. Understood. 
Sam with Esper Sentinel, and I really just hope we see uh, Colossus and Esper and Apoth Nexus come in later just for a bonkin. Yeah, loving this draft from Sam. Yeah. Cody's like sticking in his lane. He's other people are doing stuff, and he's just like eating it up. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> seemingly uncontested because anybody who would contest him is seems to be a couple slots later, yeah. looking a couple slots later in the draft already, he's picking up Misty into Delta and the underground sea back to back to back. Mike with a brainstorm and no way to reach at the top of the library is a little interesting. Again, I, I think that's the first VRD not realizing how Storm plays out. Yeah. It's also a different ranking overall for the cantrip suite when you are aggressively fighting for Fetchland sometimes, changing right. the value um, of Ponder and Preordain Brainstorm. They, they go up. No, Force of Negation is not out there. Well, Cody has it. Yeah, that was Force of Will, Hex Drink, or Force of Negation. Yep. Okay, okay, there's Ponder so... Preset. We get caves and under mountain. Yep. Which one's under mountain? That is the green one. The green oh, okay. one of value. So Sam takes the clamp. That's okay. Interesting. No bitter blossom, but you can clamp through right now your Esper Sentinel. You know, she and, loves the bitter blossom. Maybe she yeah. grabs a scroll tithe. Okay, because it'll be in white, which is basically bitter blossom. Cody right. able to get underground sea and tropical island into the point you After made. the misty of the delta, yep. his three core mana base is just sitting here, just stroking it at this point. It is, it is insane. The, their triome is going to be wide open based on what we're seeing right now. So yeah, there's nothing to stop Cody right now. There's the mire because what if foothills was already taken? Right. So, uh, what Adrian basically. Drafting the greatest hits in modern, the DRS into GSZ into Once Upon a Time into Confidant Verdant. Once Upon a Band, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Modern. This is just the band modern. Was the Foothills taken? Yes, that was oh, Alex. Was Alex. Okay. Uh, I, so that was why you were in the restroom. They, I expected right. a double fetch pick here or a fetch into a duel, and they went Wooded Foothills into Lelia, which so was a little with, unexpected. Question becomes with the comment. Is he going to grab the other initiative, the white initiative creatures? Okay. Right? The the two good ones. Um, the best two. Yes. White, yeah. We have White Plume Adventure, which is one of the two. Uh, and that was the one that was just banned in Legacy or Season Dungeoneer. Which one? White Plume was the one banned. Yeah. The one that you can cast on turn two easily. Yeah. Triumph. Oh, Kyle is a triumph. What is. We have this. So this is a new card from the Warhammer set. Ah, that's why I don't know it. Okay. So this is a card that Swifty played in the City Champs. Um, it's very potent when you miracle it. It's very not potent when you draw it into your hand. <laughs> Got it. Uh, very early for this, but they were talking about it out front before, so maybe he got a little scared that somebody else wanted it. Uh Maybe we have a space after Catherine there. So. K A T H. It oh, might oh. sometimes you have a space at the end by accident. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, so this is five five. When it dies, exile it in the top six cards of your library in a face down pile. If you do, shuffle that pile and put it back on top of your library. Yeah. So it's mainly so that miracle it, library. and then it dies, and then it goes back in your library to miracle it again. Yep. And if oh, it's hard to deal with. Yes, yeah, you, because <laughs> dies means leaves the battlefield to the graveyard. Right. It changes zones elsewise. It does not end up triggering. Right. Right. Ooh, sneak oh. attack. So there we go. That, okay. I mean, that plays with the Emrakul. Absolutely. Um, plays with the big mana. Yep. Max basically has the foundation of the premier sneak attack deck in Vintage right. Cube Drafts. Okay. Channel well, he grabs little... through the breach as well, so you know he's yep. got some backup for it. Yep, exactly. Channel is a little interesting, flexing into that spot. Usually, you would see the, the it gives you an alternate to get out your big, you know, yeah. spell draws. Especially, like channel signifies to me the fact that Max is going to stick with colorless threats. Mm -hmm. If there was going to be Gristle Brand, or maybe having to go even something as weird as Woodfall Primus or World Spine Worm, you would see Show and Tell. 
And right, the so Blue Jays like was going to be good with the Triumph. Yep. I think the and last thing you want to do off for the preordain. Yeah, I don't think you want to let Mike pick that up on the wheel. Mike already has brainstorm and ponder. Right. Mike should have know. taken one of the probably preordain over the brainstorm. I I agree with that. Um, although there is the question with Yawgmoth's well and Underworld Breach, if you take is it consider in that slot? Yeah, that's true. And you know, um, that's the new one in the calculus. Yeah. Okay, good. I mean, IOK goes as early as three sometimes, so Brandon picks up the solid bolt with bad yeah. spelling. <laughs> Two minions. Cody with Ledger Shredder. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Powerful I, creature that grows. How has Ledger Shredder been in these um, ERGs? It's, it's been interesting. So it's been played in, like, the Spell Slinger decks a little bit. I played it in a Reanimator deck. Okay. And it was pretty good there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's been as good as we thought it would be in BRD. Um, but it's been solid. Okay. It's been a solid role player. My expectation would have been where you said in the spell slinger deck, not necessarily in the soul tile list that we're seeing. All right. But we're gonna come to Mike Stoss's Oracle, but hold the phone. Step Sam. Her. Yep. <laughs> what I think I think this is going like, scepter chant? It's either you scepter chant or um what is the oh. it's not freed from the real uh the blue spell that lets you untap scepter oh dramatic reversal dramatic right. reversal right thank you mr wizard thank you very much all yeah. right so alex says i am going in white mm -hmm. um and i'm gonna go full on into this initiative yep so now alex and brandon might be fighting a little bit over pieces Mon and there's a mentor that I, call, I called on you. Yep. So, uh, Mentor and Dramatic Reversal, right? Yeah. Those are an infinite combo? Uh, there's Special. Scepter Cast. Scepter Copies. So, no, it is not yeah, infinite, okay. but it lets you do really insane stuff. It works, though. It, it is infinite? Yeah. Okay. It casts a copy. Perfect. So, it is infinite. Yeah. Yep. So we still could see Chant, absolutely. That's not the first spell that came to mind, despite right. the fact that I grew up playing Extended against Scepter Chant. Uh, yeah. But Scepter Reversal is more what I've been seeing recently. So the okay. Abrupt here is heads up. And that's yep. an, Adrian is very much in competition for that. So Cody is just on his game. Mm -hmm. He went 5-2 in the Friends and Family, and that was his first 5-2. Wow, and he had some really interesting cards there that worked out well. But like his draft is tight right now. It is insane. Like it, it's just so good. I looked over it to Nissa, who shakes the world, because I was curious to see what I've been more interested in. How Brandon's going to try and make a list out of what he has already competing against Alex. That I was looking at the Nissa. If there's a, if the Nissa is drafted, and she often is, it's she, most likely Brandon or I. Well, <laughs> we well, draft a lot of Nissa. Yeah, w uh, when I was looking at the list before the Raghavan pick, I thought we might have seen Nissa being a modifier for Forests and also a really good closer. Then Brandon switched gears, picked up Raghavan. Nah, he still wants it. It's just 3-3 three, three hasters. Okay. I thought it might have cost a little too much for this list overall. Not with the uh, Crypt. Crypt and Fast Bond. Okay. Yep. Which makes sense. Uh, trophy. So see, there we go. So Abrupt Decay goes. Adrian's like, okay, I lost Decay. I need to grab the trophy. Yeah, you can't let that. You can't let your like second most, second best yeah. most removal spell sneak away. So again, yeah. like some of Adrian's earlier picks showing his newness to VRD, but like this pick showing like I still know how to play this game and yeah. I'm very good at this game. Yep. And I know how to read a signal in a draft. Yep. Which is kind of where we we landed on originally, which is just leaning on their individual play, skill as a player versus. And don't forget that decay is Cody's first black card. So he had the Delta right. and the C, but this is the first one that says, like, okay, he is going to be three color for sure. Wow. Is this a late academy? Um, ish. It, am I in the draft? It goes up. <laughs> uh, no, this is about right. right? Okay. It's somewhere in here. It goes anywhere between four to ten-ish on average nowadays. Okay. So we're, we're just seeing a drop a little bit more to 12 from 10. Yeah, I agree with that, Caterberg. Adrian is going to make up for an experience with really technical play. Yeah. Like, so, I've judged him a lot over the years in Magic. As a Magic player or as a person? 
as a uh, both. I judge everybody as a person. <laughs> yeah. So the academy. I mean, that's definitely where it should fall in this draft, right? Yep. There's not like he has to be afraid that Mike might grab it because there's enough little tinkery artifacts that it could do some stuff there. Yep. With the uh, and maybe Sam. So at this point, it feels the right pick. Um, I love a blue white value list with Stoneforge and Academy. Mm-hmm. King Peace on. Thanks for the follow. Yeah. So we have Max on the wheel here. Curious to see Grab where they're worldly. And natural order. Mr. Wizard, natural order, that only pulls green, green creatures. Yeah. I'm okay. a little confused. I you know what? I, I trust Max. He's a bright guy. He lost two and then ended up in second place last time. But uh I there's Oh, maybe. Mr. W- Mr. Wizard. Actually, no, that's Professor X, not Mr. Wizard. Professor X reads Max's mind and says, what do we want? We want the unifying mommy. The new attraction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's- and th- that seems very appropriate. Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, this is something I was thinking about the other day, just a, as a personal note. Atraxa cont- remains every color but red. So it's weird when you want to build around Atraxa and construct it and have, usually you want to have a backup plan of like, I can probably cast my threats if the game go long enough. And I mean, some reanimate, some, sh- some sneak attacks into the breach. But that's the thing. Casting. You've got to be able if you're going to be shoving stuff through sneak attacks, you got to be able to cast your red spells. Uh, cradle, I like here. This is an early cradle, but with Brandon's list, this is a good cradle. Okay. So, a worldly tutor and natural order also signify that Max has to move into smaller green creatures at some point. Either some elves or other monodorks of sorts. So cra- pulling Cradle from Max is also, I think, a very a very valuable position. So there goes the birds. Cody mm-hmm. loses that. I know he wanted that. But that's it, to be expected. Say a la vie, you still awesome. have Noble on the board? Yeah, I mean, he could grab... He won't be able to use Tabit for Black, but, I mean... If you still want a, a one monodork, it's the best one. No, I guess Ignoble. Yeah, both. Yeah, you could go one or the other. Yeah. It, it just depends on what you need. More, yeah, the blue or the black. Yep. Other than that, though, there's, is there another one mana dork that makes those five colors? colors? No. Okay. I mean, there's some that makes like you get that L's a deep shadow that makes black. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. The value on just it's but just black, right? On L's yeah, a deep just shadow. black. Yeah. Ah, the ah, you, you go that gilded goose. <laughs> If you really want your goose to be cooked, you could do that. Uh, well, you have Oko, you know, right? He does have Oko. Yeah. That is a Professor X with the, coming off the top rope with the Gilded Goose. <laughs> I, I'd like to see Professor X come up across the top rope in the wheelchair. <laughs> that would be very painful. You know? <laughs> I, well, if you're a fan of the cartoon, he does uh, levitate himself here and there. It's, yeah, levitate off the top rope. There we <laughs> go. Mix our metaphors. I love it. <laughs> Professor X is also a five drop that's going to lock up the lane. So, no, oh, that's fair. Let's throw in another second <laughs> All right, Cody is now going. Fuck, he took my birds. I'm yep. going to go into the tank for a few minutes here it and is. figure out what I'm drafting next. And he says, "Oh, there it is. It is I'm going to take the noble." <laughs> I wonder if it's just going to be a float on the goose. I don't think he'll take the goose. I, I think it's actually a mistake in Mythoko, probably, but I Maybe. don't think he will. Because if you don't have the Oko, just the loss of the ability to tap a turn after turn is just too much. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. There so are we're some still awkward... trying to figure out the spelling of some hierarchy here. Yeah. There is the, not tireless tracker, but the smaller tracker from Modern Horizons 2. Does that one make food? Tireless Provisioner makes food and treasures. <laughs> um, I, I'm currently running it in a, a VRD. It's good, but... Yeah. It's a three drop, you know. And Sam hits it with no. all five. You were right. Oh, uh, 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 uh. I'm good at this. Yeah. 
I, I told Mark the other day I've kind of declared myself the unofficial VRD historian because I have studied the St. Lotus and the Discord lists and mm -hmm. player habits so much. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I just have a little notebook with some notes that I've seen. I'm definitely more of a try and not associate a, a theme with a player and what they're doing in that draft or an archetype with a player in that draft, but just try and hedge my bet. Right. And all right, so seal early seal. I, I I don't think he needs to do that, but he's sticking. He's got a plan. He's sticking to it. So many drills. We have yeah. so many drills there. Arid and the Rabble Master is nice for Alex. Yep. I mean, especially with the Soul Ring. I mean, Alex's list is looking good here. I mean, he's got Soul Ring Ruby, mm -hmm. right? So that lets him play a turn to uh, Under Mountain Adventurer. Or White Plume Adventurer. White, White Plume, yep. Almost all the time. And let them even play a turn to the other adventurers, too, if he gets both. Yep. Um, he can turn to a Rabble Master, like it's going out of style. He's got this value time vault that we can do something with. All right, what is Serum Snare? I'm looking. It's from one. Oh, okay. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. If that permanent had mana value three or less, proliferate. You know what they can pro she can proliferate? Poison counters. And toxic tokens. Yeah. <laughs> we can hit some poison tokens. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty early on the serum snare there, but, you know, she, she's got a plan. It, it goes on the scepter. Yeah, so there's the Bitter Blossom. Cody wanted He's like, hey, Sam's not taking it. I don't want Adrian to have it, to go with yeah. his yog. I'm going to take it Ignoble, because it's two-thirds on color. Right. Veil, yeah. Ign oh. Yeah, Veil, so super good here. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's not a lot of people that it's great against, to be honest. Mm -hmm. not oh, yet. that's a late snappy. Is it late? I thought that was early. No, that's a late snappy. Oh. The snappy is a 3-4 a lot of the time nowadays. I mean, occasionally down as far as 6. but Okay. We haven't seen the tempo deck, which is where... No, there's no tempo in here. Snapcaster Mage, so for me, this is why I thought it was... It might right. have even been uh, ahead of the curve. Cody's so, going to be the closest to a tempo deck in the end, I think. Got it. But he's got a lot of shenanigans. Yeah, and it all depends on how Mike continues to structure his deck. Snapcaster Mage could definitely have picked up some value there. Now, Snap would have been good in his deck. Uh, it's just SSG into uh, yeah, Elvish. Okay. Mm. So we are definitely just... So that library pick is on a wing and a prayer right now that it's going to do anything with all of his fast mana. I mean, maybe he hadn't fully made up his mind at that point. Agreed. I mean, he told me he didn't have a master plan when he came in. Yep. Nice swords there. So we're seeing, you know, with the hollowed into the swords and the triumph. Yep. The tundra. We, we're saying, hey, we got two colors here. Caterberg points out that we have yet to see an Urza. Yeah, I know. I don't think any of these people. Maybe Kyle. Kyle might carry my love. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think there's opportunity for it if Sam goes with the, uh, the scepter. If Sam should, because scroll Kyle. Or yep. artifacts. Exactly. And if you go back with the, the scepter combo that, that I was looking yeah. at, it untaps everything for Urza, so you can spin infinitely. Yeah, no, Sam should. Uh, for sure. I agree. Yeah. Endurance is just a great creature and a value play. Yeah, no, Endurance is good. And yeah. it's going to be really good against Mike. Oh, 100%. 100%. I'm kind of curious so, what Alex is going to pick up before the pause. I don't know. So the thing about Mike's, Mike's Storm list, right, is I, the thing that's made Storm more potentially better is that it slots in well with Thassa's Oracle, right? So I don't think a lot of people have pushed that, mm -hmm. um, but we have seen some more Storm-ish lists okay. with Thassa's Oracle and Doomsday, for example. So I think that that might be Mike's hope here, is that while I'm down on Storm, I'm high on Thassa's Oracle. And just kind of blend it all together. You're right. Because it's it the same game. Yep. Yeah. Mm, Brandon's Bayou is interesting. Brandon's not afraid of four colors. So. No, and he, Brandon has not flexed really into a third color yet. We have Comet as the no. only white. card requiring white. I mean, no cards requiring black. Not yet. Yeah. So. I know. <laughs> Sorry, for some reason I thought Tyga was Plateau. Yeah, I am intrigued. Hmm. I wonder off the, the Raghavan and Minsk and Boo. 
Oh, look, there's a call for Sam as an interview. Yeah. All right. Uro, nice, nice tight Uro there. I don't know if that was in his initial list or if he's audible. Oh, Sam with a balance. That's interesting. It's good with the walker. It's good with the fairy. You yep. know. I wonder if there's going to be a flex into a larger mana value package from Sam and just moving up towards, let's say, the five mana value to fairy so that you really have a walker that ends the game because three yeah. mana to fairy is Should great. A couple more walkers, I think. Yeah, but it doesn't end the game. So Cody with the Uro there has the fetches and the ledger shredder. They they all play well together. Right. But all the can trips that Cody would want to use to try and help that Uro, aside from like factor fiction. He's just and, drawing cards and ramping with it and then yeah. bringing it in late game. Okay. Our I mean, that's the thing about there. Uro is that you often don't play completely into it in BRD. Yep. You just take the value and then, hey, come back. I have a threat. Okay. Yeah, you're not. I would expect to want to try and cast that two or three times. So without the cantrips that are that have already been picked, it's, it would to me seem a little difficult. You still have consider on board, which is great. Um, and not peak. Uh, is it mental note? Is that old consider? Well, you know. All right, Sam, come join us. All right. <laughs> All right. Where am I going here? I'm going to go this way. And put Sam's lovely face, and you're just going to hear my face. So, actually, I'm just going to stand, and I'm going to let Sam stand. All right, there we go. All right, so Sam, yeah. tell us about what you got, what's going on. Uh, this is a plan. Say? I have one plan. Um, to not hit it. Right. <laughs> and it's working. Yeah. Oh, just cast you until I can start playing. Oh, a little bit, so we can hear you. All right. Um. So, where are we going from here? What can we expect to see? I'm not sure because I didn't think I was going to get the tinker. Um, I was going to do the fairy. So. Right. And then you saw the tinker and said, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. Because uh, I think the scroll size makes artifacts too. It does. It does there, there are artifacts, correct? Yeah. Um, We're going to see some more. So, the Especially after right. all the fun. Okay, so yeah, so the serum scare is that a scepter target then, or what are you? Is that like that seems a pearl? I wasn't sure when I was going up, so I'm just taking it down. Okay, just take it with you. All right. I was sad about the mystical tutor, so I, that was my next pick. Okay, yeah. Anything really saucy we expect to see coming up from me? I think so. I'm going to keep it pretty like fair. Okay, yeah. all right, or just removal. Like, I don't want to read your cards, you know. Right. Put that away. <laughs> well, I, so, I, it was funny. So Cody asked who was in the draft earlier in the week. Because then I said you. He's like, okay, now I know, you know where I need to pick bitter box. <laughs> and so when you showed that you weren't in that, I was like, oh, I, you know, mixing it up. So it was, uh, Having these new people is definitely helpful because they are valuing things. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're valuing things in a very like legacy vintage mindset. That doesn't always translate to BRD. Yeah. So again, we've talked about we talked earlier that Sam has completely learned BRD through the lens or through magic through the lens of BRD. So there's a lot of times where uh, she knows what cards her cards do. Yeah, and so what your people's cards do <laughs> might cause some potential issues. Yeah. Like here's my general plan. Maybe you want to stay out of it, and then he's like, no. <laughs> All right. Well, this is looking strong. I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Um, what's going to be on the scepter, Nate? What's your goal? You can't scepter, Dollar. You want shit. So funny. <laughs> April Fool, you don't get to play. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, continue it on, and good luck with the draft. Thank you. Do you want me to send someone in? What would you say? No, no, we're good. We're good. All right. So there we hear it, right? Uh, the only thing she is unhappy about losing so far was the mystical. That was going to be her next pick. Uh, and we'll see some interesting things. So yeah, the, we we see the challenges of Sam coming in. That you know some of these cards she's going to have to do a lot of reading. Uh, she gets surprised sometimes, but she's improving as a drafter every time, and it's you know, quite quality there. Yeah, I tried to get her in closer, but um, uh, all right. 
Peter should be joining us back in here in a moment. It is warm in here. This flannel needs to go. Just go down to the D and D shirt. <laughs> I behold you all as you all behold me. All right, chat. What do we think so far? I know earlier Swifty said he liked Cody's. Any surprises other than the Lotus Jet? <laughs> Peter, are you back? I am. All right. Did you listen to the same interview while you were gone? Uh, I did not. I had to uh, use the facilities. Ah, no problem. All right. So she says that the mystical tutor is the only thing that she really wanted. Okay. That she lost. Um, she said the serum snare was just she wants it, and she didn't really know where it, other people wanted it, so she just wanted to take it. Okay. And then for the scepter, she really wants to end up on chant. All right. She likes the idea of you can't play the game. Okay. That makes sense to me. Yeah, Brandon's really been big on aggro lately. He likes big green people. Um, some of the things that he does like are gone, like channel and natural order. Uh, we'll see if he ends up with the um, Eureka. When I was looking it up earlier on St. Lotus, Eureka seems to be a pick that goes later on in the draft anyway. So yeah. this makes sense. <laughs> So, yeah, it's risky. You don't have to grab it. Yeah. So something I was curious about with Alex pick coming up, and we saw our kind of a Marriott in that slot after Goblin Rabble Master is if Legion, is it Legion Loyalist? Is that the one from return to return to return? Um, you would generally see War Legion Warboss War okay. as the other one. All right. So we got a Git probe. Um, somewhere Master Plum is going, wow, what a late Git probe. <laughs> um, and then we have Sam grabbing Dovin Handle Control which is a, you know, a staple that could go anywhere from very early to very late. So if you want it, you want it. And very good against Kyle. It's strong in the main deck, strong in the sideboards. Okay, so it is a taxing effect as a passive. And yeah. the minus, until your next turn, prevent all damage that we dealt, be dealt to you and dealt by a target permanent. Okay. So it can shut down aggro for a little while, but the taxing effect is just brutal. Yeah, I do want to comment on Alice's Containment Priest. That seems really good in this draft. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with Max's shenanigans over there, and then, you know, potentially with other things that we know. Well, does Legion Warboss make more sense now? I mean, yeah, it just depends on how much you want to go into that slot. With all of the White Plume and Seasoned Engineer, etc., yep. it's just like, how much do I want to go into that three slot? I mean, what, what he's not able to do right now is deal with other people's stuff. Okay, and you can probably float War Boss down, yeah, usually in round 30. So we can definitely float Brandon might take it. Yeah, oh, I mean, okay. It, it just depends on which way Brandon ends up going as his extra colors and in his list, et cetera. Yep. I was just curious overall if that's the way we kind of take that list and we want to be more aggressive and even hover a little more, let's say around three mana value as an average with that list. You know, I think that's a really strong take, and that would make sense. Max is a dinosaur vintage player. <laughs> All right, so we got Brandon with the reanimate. So yep. he did. He said, okay, I'm changing the party. Yes. So that ignoble and Bayou was signaling something. Now, whether it will be four color or he's going to kick out of Pup, we'll see. I want Karn stays in that list still, right? There's no reason yeah. to pull it. No reason at all. Okay. All right. So we got a fluster storm. Which it seems kind of value. Yeah, that seems bog standard. That is. Tarn was available. We still have some stuff coming through the. Uh... Everybody was fighting over blue, white, black, and green in terms of fetches. That red has just been completely left behind. We have Alex with. What if Foothills and Arid Mesa is like the strongest red fetches? Right. Brendan showing why he picked Bloodstained Meyer, flexing into black with the Bayou. Scalding turn. Okay, so Max is solidly on Gruel, which is still an interesting take on this list. With the jet is just going to be value, and that's fine. Yep. You know, it's just a free mana. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've just never, I've just never seen a Gruel sneak deck before. 
I mean, we'll see. Yeah. All right, let's Adrian go here. Oh, just some value out. Elves of Deep Shadow. Uh, which makes sense. It's the only elf that makes black. Yeah, and the I only... Mean, I don't think it's bad. Or, I mean, it could have just been a regular elf getting more green, too. But he's got Cradle, so... Does Yagwas cost double black? Or... Yagwas cost double black, yeah. Double black, okay. I couldn't remember if it was him or Thran. Okay. Dragon Drag a tree speaker. That's yep. a favorite mana dwarf of his. Works well with the fast bond. Yeah. So where do you think we are now in this draft? Do you think we're just establishing archetypes? Uh, I mean, I think they've all pretty much know where they're going. And right now they're shoring up. Looks like we're shoring up some mana. We're shoring up the play. You know, we're at the point where a lot of our contentious picks yep. are gone. So we're going to contend over some land, shore up some mana, and then move into sideboard and the stuff no one's going to take. Yeah. Do you think we're going to see more removal come in now? We've only seen, is it just bolt and swords? Yeah, we should. I mean, there's enough creature decks that... Mm -hmm. uh, we've got balance. Uh, we okay. don't have a prismatic ending yet. No. I'm which curious. Is, often goes above swords at this point. Yeah. Aside from Containment Priest and Swords, I'm curious to see how people are going to deal with Max's plan. Obviously, there's control on the stack, right. but... Counter spells. Yeah. How do you deal with, let's say, a turn one channel Emrakul when you're... Yeah. yeah I mean, you just don't. You, you yeah. just, I mean, that's the power of the channel deck, is you just lose to the turn one channel Emrakul, you know? Yeah. Or let's say let's say go a little later, right? A turn three channel because one of your pieces was was late as Brandon. How do you deal with that? I you often don't. If it's channel Emrakul, you just that's it. Lose. You know, I mean, you you have them. You do enough damage before that, so they can't pay that much life. Yep. Uh, scheming fence, water give, and a late solitude. Solitude. Yep. Latest. I don't know. Solitude again goes a little over. Scheming Fence here is early. Um, I don't anyone was going to jump in on that in this case, but this card's really good. Uh, shutting down. The thing about Fence is it can randomly just shut down a Mox. Mm -hmm. You know, so it randomly acts as just mana disruption. Actually, yeah, Solitude wasn't that early. Tower Jailer, so we're mixing in a little Monarch. Mm -hmm. How has I can never remember the name of that Merfolk that steals Soul Rings. Uh, Thieving Skydiver? Yeah, how has that played out? Um, it gets drafted an okay amount. I have been blown out by it once or twice. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, it's not... I don't think it's, like, overly broken, but it's it's a good role player. Yeah, okay. Nothing too flashy to come this early in the draft, though. Right. Okay. But we're getting to the point where it's considered. Yep. So Palace Jailer introduces the Monarch. Right. So we have both the initiative and the monarch in play now. Yeah, Sam with a very good skyclave. Mm -hmm. This card is just really good. And she can bounce it with that serum snare. Yep. Mercurial oh, spell dancer. Spell dancer. I don't been... spell dancer time walk is sick. I don't remember if that was on his initial list or not. My only but... problem with Mercurial Spell Dancer continues to be the fact that you actually have to enter a combat with this card. Yeah, but in VRD, sometimes there's just not enough creatures that... <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. And I wonder if this pushes... Oh, removal. interesting. Okay, so Adrian now flexing into Abzan with yeah. only Endurance as an ETB to double? I mean, so far. Okay. I'm curious how this is going to work. He's got the Death Rite, he's got the Endotha Triome. Yep. Uh, no, the spell dancer was on his list. Okay. So he's still in. The only thing he's lost from his initial list was nothing. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, Cody is definitely on his plan. Okay. All right, so Kyle Graven's servant, so we're going to see some, you know, Obviously, he probably would have liked the Enlightened. Uh, oh, yeah. Lawyer. Well, 
yeah. Uh, so we have Tinker gone. We have Enlightened gone. Transmute Artifact is still on board, though. Right. And he's got a time twister just to draw a bit. The Seiju who shelters all, so that is the original. The marine Channel Land. No, he's got both now. Both now. Yep. Okay, the original and the Green Channel. Yep. Which is, uh, a, which is a late-ish for the Green Channel. Now I just want to see Tooth and Nail, because that's what I was doing with this card. Both Seiju. Both Seiju, yep. Oh, so he's gonna he's gonna wear a couple two card monies here out of Kyle. He's like, okay. I'm gonna play blue white two card monies. Do we have? We do not have rest in peace yet, right? No, not yet. Okay, so we're just waiting. Yeah, could grab it. Yep, but we're waiting on both halves of those two combos. But Helm is a little more open ended because you have the options in black: Dothy, Void Walker, right, and is it coercion? So I just got a message from Thurston stating the ultimate metric for an event that it's 115 and the bathroom calls are still clean. Uh, that's probably a sign that the event's not doing so hot for the sellers. <laughs> <laughs> All oh right, so there's uh, Yab creating yep. growth to go yep. with Vanessa. Uh, we do have some El Ewit for Elish Norn. So mm -hmm. double up. Okay. So. We don't have anybody that's a premier black drafter. So seeing Urborg and the depths package is something that would happen later, you think, right? Yeah, or I, I don't. I don't think anyone's going to take depths in this draft. It just becomes a value play at some point, right? I don't see any of these wanting depths. Maybe yeah. Brandon, but yeah. Okay. Drowning the lock from Cody is something I thought about when they picked up the Leisure Shredder. I thought that's where we were going to see some play. But I wasn't sure about it because it just floated for a while. But yeah, I, guess I mean, no one else is in those two colors. So it well, it's also good. not that popular, correct? It's just gets... It's fine. Mm -hmm. it, it, every time I've drafted it, like, it sucks. But other people seem to do really well with it. <laughs> that's fair. All right, we got a Cabal Ritual for Mike. He's still mm -hmm. like, I'm going to do Stormy stuff. Yeah. Curious when Mike is going to pick up Consider and or Mental Note. Yeah, valid question there. Yeah. Or or that one. Thought Scour, yeah. yeah. I love... I love Thought Scour as a card. It's great. It's fantastic. Um, but misdirection is not a fun card, and you can't misdirect a mental note. All right, so we got a Fable. Nice, strong pick here. Gives him a treasure for the uh, white, or the third color. Mm-hmm. So... And honestly, like, with just the Foothills and the Mesa, he could just say, I'm not going to run the red in six and go red-white. And there's nothing wrong with that. No, not I don't at all. know if he's an experienced enough VRD player to realize that you can just sit your second pick or third pick. Like, I've taken Time Vault and then just said, oh, no, I'm not going to play it. Uh, Mason Lightning Bolted is the king of, like, I'm going to take a second pick thought seize yep. and then put it on my board. And both Taiga and Stomping Ground have been picked. Yeah. So any so it, red source... Or any gruel source that we're fetching is going to ETB tapped. Yeah, so if I'm Alex, I'm looking at that Undermountain Adventurer and Renin 6 and saying, you know what? I'm probably not going to run that. these. Yep. Just forego all of that. I'm still curious if we do anything with the Time Vault. That's just kind of sitting there in the list. Ooh, Crop Rot. Okay. Well, Crop Rot shows he's still going to go green. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Take everything back I just said. I am wrong. All right. Snuff out is you pay life, correct? It is uh, not the one where you give your opponent life? Yep. Okay. We also have an enlightened mark. Ooh, Sam with the monk class. And Sweet. we got to need to see that one. There we go. Yeah. Is that Azor? You cast costs one less. When this class becomes two, return it to one target and online permanent to its owner's hand, so do a bounce. And then you need to upkeep X with a top card. 
smarter lanes are because he may cast it as long as she's casting their spell. Pretty good with top. Yeah. I think he exile the top card for as long as you may cast this card. I wonder if we ever want to get it to three. Uh, yeah, you, I mean, you have the mana, you're going to do it. With top in particular, like you draw a card, cast a card, cast top off the top. Off the top, yeah. Right, and then, you know, you've got Mentor. That's fair. Without two, without uh, two tops, you can't do the uh, the silly loops like that. Right. Top for top for top for top for top. And it really excels the top, so mm-hmm. you can do it once. Well, if, if you without monk class, if you're going to do the the weird top shenanigans of float top, put top on top, spin the other top, draw the top, right? right? You put there with top, play that top, and just spin your wheels with both of them to, to continuously trigger Monastery Mentor for as much mana as you have available. So that's not something we're doing. I wonder what what else Alex is going to pick up with that crop rotation because right now it is just Urza Saga and Fetch Lands. Right, fixing. Uh, I mean, he could pick up a Wasteland. Mm-hmm. The Avamaya is gone, so that's not an option. Right. It. I mean, so maybe a Valakut, but that would seem a stretch. That yeah, seems very ambitious. Yeah. I mean, the good thing about three color for the initiative deck is mm-hmm. that if you, like, as soon as you get the initiative, you get your fixing really easy. Like, initiative makes the fixing super easy. Mm-hmm. That's fair. And Ottawa are very solid. Yep. Second best of the cycle. So we have the reanimate from Brandon, but nothing to pair with it yet. But most of those threats do get picked later on. And draft. Brandon's also a fan of a value reanimate like me. Just like I just want it to get back my whatever threat, you know, my thought not seer, my whatever it may be. But that's the thing. That thought not seer right now is the only reanimatable threat in his list. Yeah. Literally. Everything else is a dork or Raghavan. Yeah, I think he got rocked a little bit, and he's on the fence, but if anyone pulls those on the fences together, it's typically Brandon. Mm-hmm. Now, with with Brandon's style of a Valley reanimate package, does that mean we'd also see something like Exhume? Or... No, you don't even worry about it in the value. You're just getting back the creature they removed. Mm-hmm. You know, you're getting back... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see a Fury here. Uh, Out of Brandon? Yeah. Okay. Or somewhere in the next couple picks. Yeah, it also makes sense for Kyle with the Painter Servant, depending on how you want to play yeah, that Yeah, he's not going to go into red. I mean, that, that's a nice combo for sure. Yeah. That, that is something I did give pause to, uh, was reanimate can, actually, can target the threats in your opponent's graveyards, but thus far, yep. aside from Lelia, I don't know. There's the Airborg. Okay. And Hex Drinker, I don't know if there's anything else that Brandon would really want to target with that Reanimate right now. Yeah. We can't get the ammo with Reanimate, that's for sure. At this point, Brandon could go Dark Death. I mean, I wouldn't be horribly surprised. Mana Drain. Okay. That's a... Whoa. Kyle just realized something... Something is a miss here. Usually he's going... This is where Cody's looking at his list going, I stuck to my list way too much, <laughs> realizing that I was getting all the things I wanted, yep. forgetting that, hey, some cards get forgotten. Yep. And here we go, Max picking up the dorks because they've been floated by Cody as cards that he needs for natural order. Yeah. And, and I don't think Cody wants them. That's fine. The personal tutor is interesting here. What does personal get? Is that the blue tutor from Portal? Or is that the green tutor? It's sorcery. Sorcery. So, so we got another top tutor. And there's yep. the Fury, as I called. Yep. Opposition agent from Cody. Okay. That's really good sideboard. For, look at all these tutors. Yep. He's like, we got a tutor party. <laughs> I'm Sam going just, to do something about that for my yep. sideboard. Sam just weathering the storm, sticking to the oh. plan to various protection. Sam going the balance to fairies protection. Yep. See you later. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Yep. Uh, Mark was just talking about this on one of our videos the other day that this this parry needs to be looked at more. Okay. 
So Alex it looks like sticking with Bam. So there's a little bit of Lance. So we got Nail. Elvish Reclaimer. Yep. And we got Knight. So he could also grab the Dark Depths now too. Yep. Yep. I wonder, uh, one of these decks could be a, a Loam deck. Brandon might actually, uh, could have flexed into Loam with Reanimate. Yeah. The fairy who slows the sunset is the mono blue. It's a fairy from one of the crim. No, it's the four. It's the four drop white blue. Um, it's actually one that... with time vault. Yeah, but she doesn't have. Um, or Nick though, it's, it's... pioneer. Okay, uh, but it's a solid card. It does well, a lot of work. Have... It digs you deeper. It untaps scepter too, right? It's just a permanent. Yeah, you can untap scepter. All right, so we have the collective, so some discard, yep. some just value this member. Yeah, Mike is not picking up the protection suite that he needs right. to be able to play Storm. Protect uh, Collective Brutality playing both ways. The discard outlet for Breach and Yawgmoth's Will, as well as a removal spell in the form of the minus, minus two, minus two, and then protection in the, hey, you discard a sorcery. Right. So, so obviously, obviously he's only going to have consultation. He's mm -hmm. not going to go for the other one because he's not drafting land, so he can't do that party. Yep. Uh, no, are you talking about Spoils of the Vaults? Or? No. Uh, Patanus, oh, Alex seems like a loam deck. Yeah. I'm talking about Mike with the Demonic Consultation. He, yep. He's not going to, he's only going to have Consultation. He's not going to have Pack 2. Oh, oh okay. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Because you need to draft a lot of lands. Yep. Patanus Pack. Got it. Okay. Yep. Uh, so, one of the things I'm interested in, and this may just be the players don't know, um, but no one, so Snowflands are now just available now. So mm -hmm. I wonder if someone grabs, uh, I've grabbed it a whole lot, uh, but I want a lot of Urza, so it makes sense. But I wonder if someone grabs Astrolabe. Astrolabe, yeah. Uh, Sam and the Tinker deck would be good with. And yep. Kyle. Uh, so Brandon takes his classic, his, his favorite card. Questing Beast. Beast. Is it just because it has so many words? It's just ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, it kills walkers, it hates the... And there's the goose. goose. We've had more mana dorks in this draft than uh, any draft that I remember. This, yeah, this is, this is a lot. A lot, a lot. So we're... Okay, so with Elish Norn, that is Magical Christmas Land, where you make two treasure tokens. Yeah, but you've already got a five drop, so if you really care about the two food tokens at yeah. that point, you're probably in trouble. So... We did overlook the Eldritch Evolution. No, we did. Hit. We did. It's and really good with Yogg. Yeah. With Convert to yeah. cost X or less. But what do we, we... I still have the question of what we are doing here. What, what would you say you do here, Adrian? I mean, he's just trying to get a Yogg combo going. So he's going to have value and removal into some either Yogg, maybe some backdoor, some devoted Druid combo as well. It's got to be something like that because um, Young Wolf is not a powerful card for this draft. I mean, it enables, you know. For sure. Uh, Finhorn and Wall of Roots, Max is like going all in on these. I've got, I'm going to try to go quick. Yeah. I, like you take Wally Tudor or Natural Order, you've got to do something. I wonder if the, is it Magus of the Order? The White Magus? Nope. Magus of the Order is Natural Order, but on a oh, creature. Okay. I got it. Okay. I mean, just because you got a tap and it's a. It's a, yeah, it's a 3 3 for 4 that requires you sacrifice it and another creature. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Identity. That's a card I've been thinking about lately, but I wasn't sure if anybody would pick up. Well, I mean, he's got some big mana to start with the two, with the monolith yep. and the uh, bolt, I think. So. It you seems like to go to the um, picture view at this point. It there seems like go. if you want to play Fractured Identity, you have to make sure that this is a VRD that is about permanence rather than about spells. Well, this one seems pretty permanent-based. Oh, absolutely. I think that was that was why I questioned it when I was thinking about VRD leading into this event, was right. where are we going to be here, and does a card like Fractured Identity actually work in this draft? Okay, so Brendan picks up the Lotus Cobra. Right now has Meyer... And Keith, yeah, as the available fetches. So we're so missing. He, he will end up. 
with a one of the play at Mirrorlands, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Sam so plus the complete. Dottie the Luge. We have yep. Caldra and the Thirst. Okay. That's me stage into depth. There we go. Alex picks it up. Okay. So that, that takes off the question about Brandon Knight. We're just going to get that done on the wheel. That often happens on the wheel. There's the consider. Mm-hmm. Which makes sense. I think. How many are we to break, Mr. Wizard? 34. So eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. Nine. Okay. All right. So Sam, I'm going to leave you solo for a second while I hit the bathroom again. Yep. So Sam floated, called you a complete as nobody was really looking to move into an equipment based plan of any sort. And then picking up the, I guess, value blight steel to go with the tinker and with balance and Teferi's protection being able to kind of draw out the game. It makes sense that you give yourself the time to be able to find the tinker for blight steel. Now, there's not a lot of threat of her drawing it and having it get stuck in hand, but I wonder if we will eventually see something to kind of insulate against that in time. Mike also has the ability to kind of go back and start looking at cantrips to pick up Thirst for Knowledge. Great draw spell that does involve discarding two. I don't, I understand why you would take it there over something like Consider at that spot as Sam or Max might be looking for that just kind of churn, but we will see where something like uh, Thought Scour or Mental Note apply to Mike. Cody picking up Subtle T, which is the fourth elemental to be picked up here. So I wonder, so Cody has the ability to play on the stack for free all over the place, having both Force of Will and Force of Negation. Uh, that's correct. The Otter has not been picked. There is no Lutri. So if we take a look at Lutri, usually picked in round 15. Yeah, we are nine rounds past where we would see Lutri. As a value proposition card, it makes sense because it seems like a lot of the cantrips were floated a lot later. So without those, Lutri might not have been higher on people's list than in previous VRDs that we've seen. Without somebody drafting a tempo-based deck or having a lot more tempo cards early on in the draft, it, to me, makes a little sense that we'd see Lutri continue to be floated. Brandon picking up Oath of Nyssa. Now, this only works... This is fixing for Planeswalkers after the ETB, right? Of the top three cards of your library, you may reveal a creature, land, or planeswalker from the, from above. So this does provide some fixing that I think Brandon does actually need for his deck, but allows him to flex into additional planeswalkers if he would like to. Finale of Devastation continues Adrian's kind of inevitable march towards a Court of Calling combo deck of some sort that you would see in modern, be it Yogg. I doubt we'll move into Tara, truly into Abzan for the Heliod Ballista combo, but Finale of Devastation allows you to search through your library and your graveyard to ensure the redundancy on that combo piece. And with only Swords to Plow share right now, it's the only removal spell that exiles as I look through this draft. It makes sense to look for something like that. But I'm curious because Adrian does have Cord does have Eldritch Evolution, does have Finale of Devastation, if we do move more into white and just kind of play as much of the Abzan combo deck as you can. I don't think it's a hard flex to do that, but I think it might muddy the waters a little bit. Kyle picking up the Wandering Emperor signals a little bit more to me that we're officially off the wheels plan and we might now be on more of an Azor control deck. I think you kind of miss Teferi's protection in this list, but between Fractured Identity and the Wandering Emperor, I think we've kind of shored up a lot of the combat step. Okay, Max has the wheel, and we're seeing Primeval Titan immediately. And with Thespian Stage Dark Depths gone, I wonder if we get Field of the Dead coming out of Max. 
or if we're just going to value our prime time buy our ticket okay so we're looking for fixing when does field of the dead usually get taken professor x Field of the Dead going around round 31. So we're coming up on, oh, we're coming up on that point in time. But Adrian shows the zero remedies. So it does look like we are moving more into abs and all combos. I don't want to pat myself on the back too hard, but here all we are. All right. So I left at the Blight Steel and just come back. We got Subtlety, Brandon Oath, another one that he loves. Yep. So I'd like to take the next couple of picks just in tandem. We have Adrian with Finale of Devastation, which I thought with uh, I didn't I missed Devoted Druid, but with all the other options, we might flex into abs and all combos. The Zero Remedy mm -hmm. comes in after Finale. So here we are. We're now kind of looking at Devoted Druid combo alongside Yogmoth, right? So we're playing a really redundant combo base. Wandering Emperor JTMS now shows Kyle as being, I believe, off wheels and now on Azor Control. And we have Max taking Primeval Titan. And with a decent pause, I thought we might have seen Field of the Dead. Instead, we're going to play a value prime time right now with Firelit Ticket. Um, let me get the door shut right there. Someone yep. can hear me. Uh, Field's pretty hard to pull off. Uh, without a lot of land drafting. It's a little easier now that we allow snow just without drafting because now mm -hmm. you can just run one snow, one other. Um, but again, that's a new enough twist. I don't know if anyone's going to think about that as yeah. much. But right now, before we even get to the Besage, both Sages, Max has four unique lands that do not sacrifice. Right. That Ancient Tomb, Library, City of Traders, back to back to back, and Stomping Ground. Yeah, he's been done. I like I like Max taking his fixing. You have to eat your vegetables. But if you think you're going to need a lot of fixing and you want to play Primeval Titan, it seems like to me you would take one of the other premier packages available to you as depth is now gone. Right. You have a lot of picks in front of you to take weird things like fire lit thicket and root bound crag. Stuff like that. For sure, for sure. Cody is still on just now. He's just flexing on his sideboard a little bit. He's saying, yeah. hey, there's a lot of red green. This Ether Ghost looks really good. Absolutely. I I feel remiss that we don't spend a lot more time talking about Cody's draft. It's just here's the card and move on because it is just, like you keep saying, fantastic. Yeah. I mean, when when you scrap the deck, I mean, now, the end question is whether his crafted craziness, and he hasn't gotten the craziness yet. Oh. Whether his crafted well, craziness yeah. is going to be good or not. Okay. But uh, when you craft a deck and you just get to go down the list, it's... Yep. <sighs> Alex picking up protection. Fair. So okay. this is... We talked about... Good rep there. We talked about Mike as being uh, an old head, right? Somebody who is experienced in legacy and, and vintage, yeah. right? So Chain of Vapor is a really interesting card. If we could bring that up, Mr. Wizard. And uh, I'll wait until it's been brought up. So, in Vintage, there exists the ability, before Paradoxical Outcome was a card, where you just chain a vapor all your Moxin back to your hand after producing mana, and then dump them all back on the battlefield for your Storm Count. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if that was on Max's list, thinking maybe I'll get a bunch more zero mana value rocks to pick up and then put back down. <clears throat> or if Mike is considering chain as just a well it's a one mount of value spell that offers a bit of removal over something like vapor snag i think it's a little both right it's a one minute value spell but it can also be used just to up your score count a couple mm -hmm. uh, i like this unexpectedly absent i mean it probably could have gone anywhere but this card this is good and yeah. underrated mental misstep coming off of cody's list so i mean the fact that it, it unexpectedly absent can just at two mana just put it on top and then you know later on can dig even a little more yep Very. let me see so this is the card is unexpected put target non-line permanent yep what is the um the white spell from eldritch moon is it 
it's not collective restraint where you target the player, but they put an attacking creature back on the top of their library. Mm, I'm not sure. There's a lot of that. Like, but we still notedly have Vista out, which would be best in Adrian's deck because he's got three colors with white. Uh, mm-hmm. well, not Vista, sorry. Um, Indy. Because we still have yeah. March of Otherworldly Arches. Dreams out. So we still have some premier white removal. Yep. It's kind of floating. Yeah. Or March of Otherworldly Light. Yeah. Dreams. Brandon with Alice. We have Otherworldly yeah. Dreams. You all have Otherworldly Light. We are not the same. <laughs> All right. Brandon loves an Alice or Shepherd. Like, yep. at this point, he's just going to the classics. He's just like, these are the things that I love to do. <laughs> so most of the elves are already out, aren't they? Max has... It's the green spells can't be counted. He doesn't okay. care about the elves. Okay. I wasn't sure if that was the case yeah. or not. It just Yeah. It, he doesn't care about the elves. It's the green spells can't be counted. Okay. Uh, dress down. To dress down. <laughs> Katerberg saying he expects a altar of the brood. Oh, which is Brandon loves him some altar of the brood. Okay, uh, so dress down is every judge's nightmare. It is the uh, in a lot of ways it is the new humility. Every annoying question that someone just comes up to ask me about is often a dress down question. Yes, yeah, wandering. He loves him some altar of the brood. So this is just a value play at worst. It cycles at best. Yeah. You just, it's great in the board, right? It's great against Max. Yeah. Um, it's just a really good sideboard card. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically it right now. I mean, um, you might be able to catch Sam on a combo turn if Sam does make it to combo. But other than right. that, yeah, it just seems like pure value. Yeah, it's just a very solid utility answer for the board. Yeah. So Mike did pick up Echo of Eons, which again works with LED. So we're just extracting as much value from LED as we absolutely can between Underworld Breach, Brain Freeze, and Echo. Right. I mean, he's, he's set up nice. He's got... Yep. Um, so there, I mean, there's some things we have, like Al has an Archon of Ameria. Mm-hmm. Um, what other things can come in that can just say no? Uh, we could see from Sam something like a um, the white so we could see a failure, but it's still out there, right? Because uh, the other failure was taken, right? Yeah. By Sam. Not the, not the better one. Uh, nope. We also could see Ether Sworn Canonist. Oh, oh sure. we, got a th- we got a three rock. Three ball. So Max is on the wheel taking three ball. Yeah. So that removes that sideboard card from Brandon's list. Yep, for sure. Because Brandon has KGC and or the Karn with pants and. No, Karn with Pants is Cyan of Urza. Is it? I thought that was Karn without pants. No, Karn Lit is Karn without pants. Okay. Yeah. I'm a oh. Cyan of Urza fan. I know his pants well. Okay. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> Me and his pants go way back. Oh. We used to date back in college. I I, I, I should remember this Not one Karn, having... the pants. Yeah, yeah, just you and that the pants. I remember more this one more as Karn plus Weber Grill. <laughs> So, do you think Trinisphere is going to end up in Max's main? I don't like this pick. No, he's got way too many dorks for it to end up main. I, I don't, I don't like this pick in his list. I, I don't know what it's doing here. Yeah, it doesn't make sense if you're going to sideboard it in against Mike. Against Mike. I would, yeah, I would almost rather have Mind Break Trap if you're going to pick a sideboard card in that slot. There seems to be a lot better sideboard cards against it. Yeah. But I do like the thread. Oh, absolutely. I will tell you, I've been having great success with the new thread. This guy. Oh. Costs one mana more, but he's kind of stupid. <laughs> thread Breaker Silence? Yeah. Yeah. The 5-5 five, five Trample can't be countered. Yeah. Can't be targeted by non-green spells and abilities. Mm-hmm. As long as it's your turn, when he's attacking, he has Indestruct. Yes, which makes him a terror in the combat step. Now, I mean, he can be wrapped away mm-hmm. where Thrun and Lastral is harder to sweep away. But most of your sweepers are going to be like Toxic Deluge, uh, so it doesn't really matter. Which can get him anyway, yeah. The only sweeper that sees play that can't kill a Thrun and Lastral is Supreme Verdict. Okay. We don't traditionally... Damnation, but that's super rare. I was going to ask about Damnation, yeah. We don't see 
We don't damnate. We don't actually, or we might damnate. We don't actually cast wrath of God. Very rarely. And nobody's nobody's tried a farewell, right? Nobody's tried that one. No, it's too much mana. It's, it, I've yeah. thought about it. It's solid. Oh yeah, it does, it does so much. Mana. Yeah. What about um? Is it the Mardu? Um, what were they from Ikoria? The wedge based like ultimatum sanctuary there. Is it really the most of first combos? So this deck has been done a few times. Mix success. I've played Adrian's deck before, uh, to like a two five or a three four. Uh, someone else played it to a four three. Um, so uh, Dan. I'm not sure about Dam. Damn it is Wrath of God. They do not No, not, it's not Damnation, Dam. Oh, Dam itself. Dam oh, is it Wrath also of God. Be regenerated. So, Correct. Okay. When you overload Dam, it just becomes Wrath of God. There is a slight wording difference, but it is not in the regeneration. All right, so there's the Faithless. I, I will maybe throw some of my own creatures for the reanimate. And this is... It's still such a perplexing list. There's so, there's like two or three individual... I need to get into Brandon's... As I said, I know Brandon is a drafter better than anybody, but occasionally you're just like, okay, I'll watch and see what goes on here. You take the wheel. Yeah. Okay, Spell Stutter Sprite with Bitter Blossom. Okay. And Brazen and Power. Also, right? I think Spell Stutter is massively underdrafted anyway. Yep. Even as just a, I only have one fairy, there's as so many one drops in the floor back. Yeah. Just as like, a force spike. Yeah, just as a yeah. force spike on a body. Yeah. It's, it's good. Um, how and he's also got Brazen Borrower. Yeah. No, well, yeah. I was counting upwards when I saw Brazen Borrower. How has Vendelian click in the format? Uh, it's good. Uh, I could see Kyle or Cody taking it. Uh, speaking of four spikes. Yeah, there it goes. Monetize. Yeah. And then we have Night of Autumn. Mm -hmm. Just a solid, solid value from Night of Autumn. You know. uh, so Night of Autumn is Disenchant. Gain four yeah, bigger or gain four wider. Okay, that's the one I forgot. Prism yeah. and there goes prismatic ending to Alex. Okay, right, so that's a late ending. Super late. Yeah, Alex has got to feel good about that. Mm -hmm. So Alex is ending up at a list that I like a lot. Uh, kind of a red white value, but added in some Nia lands package. Yep. My worry is that it's he doesn't have the tomb, but he does have soul ring and mox. Which is, is pretty close. This deck really wants an ancient tomb, um, but it's just gonna. Is he able to deal enough with other stuff? Does he take the fires package, for example? Uh, the punishing fires package. Yeah. All right. So we had Confluence City Breath. Cody takes the Mind Break Trap. Mm -hmm. Soul Tide. Yeah, I was getting ready to ask for this one, but Professor X read my mind and is already on it. You think of. So this is just removal slash tax. Okay, interesting. All right, that is definitely. Oh, there's mind break trap to Cody. Yeah, and there's the crucible okay. draws for the yog package. Well, now he doesn't have the herb or triple black is going to be a pain in the ass for him. Yep. I didn't draft messenger when I did this deck because I was afraid of the triple black. Uh, well, he does have Twilight Mire, and I wonder if the Orzov one comes into play as well. The Orzov filter yeah, land to help with the black. Um, I wonder if we're just going to go full on value and also pick up Grave Digger. You know, a thing that I've often thought about that I've not done yet is Grave Digger Carnival of Souls. Oh, okay. Uh, not Grave Shifter. No one's Grave Shifting. Yeah, I've thought about Gravedigger Carnival of Souls with like an Ashnod's Altar or something that gets benefit when it comes in. But, you know. Uh, so we got, ooh. All right. Kyle speaking my language. With the uh, I ran this as a Tinker target. And I've also run it, but because he's probably going to go with it with the new Urza. I'm expecting the new Urza out of this list. He's got some big mana to flip it and become the Urza Planeswalker. Oh, okay. Now, do you think we have enough of an early game to make it to five mana reliably? I mean, he's got Vault and, and Monolith. Monolith. Yep. I would expect this around, like, turn three? 
he yeah that's the fastest yeah uh no he does not have work oh he does have workshop okay yeah he's got shop too and that's nice yeah. the my only concern um, about workshop is that it just doesn't play well with what we've seen drafted so far out of this deck we have abandoned painter servant and helm of obedience and as i we, said about the thread about workshop yeah uh, i would like to see if rex and metamorph from kyle yep it is definitely a weird shop deck because we have mono drained bribery fractured identity wandering emperor chase these are all maybe. very color intensive Kyle's color. Smart enough. maybe he kicks out of the show maybe i'm just saying or we could see he could lean into shop later on in the draft right now it right. just seems kind of like out of place i mean if he takes the other Urza, then, or if he takes Urza Lord Protector, it yep. does make those artifacts one cheaper. And there it is. <laughs> Urza Lord Protector. Yep. So he's protecting. And we have and Ulamog the Ceaseless Hungerer out of Max, which is another great right. channel option. So Kyle moving up my list of uh, things I enjoy. And this hopefully means the real Urza will please stand up and get his proper due. In my deck. Oh man, because this Urza is nothing but Slim Shady. Like, yeah, the real Urza. All right, we got Blood Artist, Blood Artist, and we got a super value of Braid out of Brandon. Yeah, if we have Blood Artist, I do expect Grave Crawler at some point, or or some kind of re recursive threat. Is it a Shambling Skeleton? Is that one of the ones you can buy back? Yeah, but that one's more expensive. Yeah, too. Right. I, I mean, with Vizier and. Or with Druid, you can do different stuff with Grave Car, where you just, or with Yogg, you can just cycle through. Yep. It basically can become the kill with Yogg. Yes. Because it gains you the life when they, you pay for the life for the sacrifice. Mm hmm So that's what they... That's what they do it for, yeah. Right. Brandon? I'm still very super, super good in this draft. And there's yeah. plenty of creatures that can kill, and then just artifact value as well. Uh, all of our hermits are still Mia. Nobody's on Squirrel Tribal yet. Bill Strix is, in my I, opinion, the second best blue black creature in the format. And I know Cody's going to draft what, in my opinion, the best blue and black creature in the format. Is it Chad on Mage Infiltrator? Let, let's see if Chad can figure out what I think the best blue black creature in the format is. I'm also curious to know. That is Leslie, a nice, nice, late, powerful JVP. JVP, that yeah. plays really well in that deck. And Smothering Tide's first appearance. She's like, y'all going to draw some cards? I'm going to get some. Be that too. She would, so that would also make Urza nice in her deck. So I'm just saying, some people need to be Urza. You, you're not Urza. wrong about that. Sam has the Pearl as acceleration right now, and I think that's yeah. about it. Layline there you go. Line binding. Oh, I wonder if we're going to get some late triumphs out of Alex to pump up that prismatic ending and ley line binding. That yeah, would be smart. Then we get then we get more value. I don't want to say more value because it's really hard to outvalue Thespian stage depth, but crop rotation becomes a more interesting card. Mark contributed is cheating because Mark's had this conversation uh, without me. But yes, it is. And the ninja is the best. Uh, is not is it Kaito Suzuki or Yuriko? No, it is um Deep Hours is mono. Paul and Shinobi. Okay. A ridiculous blue black creature. Yep. Kaito is a planeswalker, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which he's wrapped now he had great success in Friends and Family with the new Kaito. Not the okay. original with the new one. And he is a big fan. He thinks it's really strong in the format. Yep. Defense grid goes. I was mentioned earlier that if if it was noticed by Mike or Matt, oh. they would pick it up. You know what? I'm gonna marry Sam because to fairy who sets the sunset and stasis is an yep. amazing combo because you can just untap your island over and over again to keep paying for stasis. Yep. And she's got an enlightened tutor for it. Uh, and if she does omen, if she does omen, or she does chant as well. Yeah, like she's really just saying like you can't. Yeah, but Leobold has green too. So he, I was talking just blue one. Just blue. Yep. Stasis, Orms chant, and um, uh, the blue card that I can't remember that allows you to untap everything. 
also work yeah. well. Yeah, you can effectively stasis lock somebody out. Is Winter Orb played? Oh, it's not Winter Orb. Static Orb. Uh, Winter Orb is with Urza. Or both of them yeah. are with Urza, but more so Winter Orb. Winter Orb, yeah, yeah. That Static Orb is the one that just seems more niche that people forget about. It's good when you have, like, the Merfolk deck, and you're just trying to be honest. There's a quality card out of Adrian here. Yep. Yeah. That's the red-white. No, it's the green with a black kicker. Oh, okay. Exile target artifact or enchantment. And if the spell was kicked, exile target non-land permanent enchantment. Yep. It becomes, it becomes almost vindicate. Yeah. Yep. So it's a format of vindicate if kicked. Otherwise, it's just exile target artifact or enchantment. So yep. it's a very solid card. Back to back. And there's my boy. It's your boy. It's your boy. We've got Tag Team Urza and Kyle's list. Yeah. Okay, I signed Cottle out of Cody, which makes sense in the list. We we jumped over that one. Brendan picking yeah. up Leyline of the Void, which pulls that card out from underneath Kyle, who still has Helm. Yeah, but he wasn't going to go the Leyline. He was going to go Rip, if anything. Yeah. I mean, he's... He... Brotherhood's End. Vandal Blast. Brotherhood's End, solid. That's a... a... Very interesting card. Uh, Three damage. Be good against a couple of these decks. Yeah. Vandal Blast into Brothers at Hood and 2 definitely puts a stamp on this event. Uh, shattering, Shatterstorm costs one mana too much. Yeah. Right. And most of the stuff you really want to hit lower anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. So Brotherhood's End is just a better Shatterstorm. Who's going who's gonna to draft Welding Jar? In all honesty. Ah, so Cody did this to me in a game the other day. Uh, the medallion with Painter Servant are really interesting. So oh. Cody in a game the other day against Brandon had Painter Servant naming Red, and it had Ruby Medallion, and then played his Shadow Spear for free. <laughs> wow, that is... Yeah. There's the Geist. Yeah. Some color fixing for Brandon, Pile. And I... I Value sideboard Dothy Voidwalker. Yeah. So rest rest in peace is really then the only card that Kyle's looking at right now to go with that helm, showing pure Azor and no deviation. Right. Right. Yeah. There's not another agnostic option, uh, either in white or as an artifact. Correct. Everything else. I can't think of one. Yeah. It was either Rip or the black cards. Or Dothy Boyd Walker. Yeah. Ripper those black, yeah. Wish Claw Callisman, so okay. I'm going to wish for something, and it's going to end the game. I don't care if you have this card. So Brandon ignoring his Karn package so far, but I think Brandon's an advocate for the only card that matters in the Karn package is really just Michael's Michael 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 Michael. latest. Yeah. There, there are some other light options that have been picked up in Trinisphere, which we talked about. Null Rod is definitely an option that could have been taken. As yeah, well. They can make fun of me all they want, Caterberg. Kyle knows where it's at. It's true. <laughs> yeah, because Brandon's list isn't one that doesn't want to enter the combat step, so that basically puts the kibosh on bridge. And EE out of the sideboard, do you think would be a little too slow? Out of the board? I mean, out of the board, it's fine. Mm-hmm. So we got some quality no rod here. Are we at break? Not yet. This is the last one. Uh, last one before break. Alex is just deciding what to wheel now. Right. There's this slight taxing element to Alex's deck that makes me curious where we're going to stick. The two mana value Thalia is still being floated, I believe. Right. It is. There's no... Um, what's the Dryad from Return to Rav? The one mana value, two, one. Uh... Brian Militant. Yep, Brian Militant. Still out there. Oh, our Ketria Trium allows us to flex. Yep, nice. He gets a smart pick here. Yeah. On color, it gets a little bit more for his prismatic, a little bit more for his ley line. Absolutely. A lot of bounce spells in this draft. Like, yeah. You know, a little, it's a little more bouncy. There you go. There's the chance. There's a chance. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Peter, on this next interview, I'm going to let you do it. I'm going to oh, okay. for a second. 
All right. Who do we got? Do we know who we're coming? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, chat, who do you want to see? What are you going to make a fit with? So we got someone says Adrian. Okay. All right. Was Cody making a statement on his closing for this round, or is he just going to continue and shore up? Does, does Cody have – oh, it is Leovold. That was, I was thinking either Leovold or the Triumph, but there we go. There's Leovold. So. That stamps that. I hope Brandon attempts to give us a clue as to what's going on with this list. Because right now, the clearest thing is that we're playing green cards. Yeah. He doesn't have the natural order, which he would often like. Or um, he's a big fan of Decimator of the Province as his crater hoof. Yep. Ah. And he also doesn't have the colorless lands to, like, kick up the Thought Knot theory yet. So he may have had to kind of kick off that. Okay. And he could always do that. So aside from Ancient Tomb and City of Traders we would expect colorless lands in the form of the pain lands, so Carpelusian Forest or... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, those are the generally your best Eldrazi and Avord. Yes. Oh. Obnixilus Ob the adversary. Is this the uncommon Obnixilus? No, this is the rare one that makes two copies of itself. When oh, it from Streets of New Capenna. Okay. Yeah. Curse the Hunger Tide. Yep, makes sense. Yeah, no, yeah in a minute. We're going to... Yeah. Mox Opal. All right. All right, the Opal. Bring him in. Oh, yeah, yeah, we can go ahead and bring him in. All right. All right. I'm going to step up. Ask him if he's a Braids enthusiast. All right. All right, Adrian. All right, you're good. Mox so, Opal from Kyle. Uh, definitely pairs well with the Polarian Academy. I do want to see some more value artifacts from that list, though. And Peter will be here. And Hello. Hey, Adrian. Hey, how's it going? Oh, good for me. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. All right. So we were watching the beginning of the draft, and it was interesting to see you take Emerald so high. Usually we're used to that floated later on, maybe even on the wheel from the eighth seat, and into collector roof. And we thought immediately that you thought you were you might be taxing this format, that you were going to come in hard with Oof, maybe Null Rods and Thalia. And then you handbraked into Yogmoth combo. Yeah. <laughs> well, I played Collector Roof in the sideboard of my Yogmoth combo deck in Modern yep. sometimes. And I was thinking, I saw all these, you know, artifact things going on, and I was like, no. <laughs> and I think it was actually kind of goofy, mm -hmm. but I think it was good because a lot of these other guys are on green too. Yeah. It seemed like you were, aside from Cody, you weren't really fighting anybody for a lot of what you were trying to do. Uh, I'm primarily a modern player because Legacy doesn't exist uh, out here in Vermont. So right. I figured this is exactly what we were going to see. We were going to see a Yawgmoth list, and it just kind of plays down that for a while. A little bit of a rub, like I said, between you and Cody, uh, the Abrupt Decay, Assassin's Trophy stuff, Hex Drinker maybe. Yeah, I wanted the, uh, I wanted the Abrupt Decay for sure, but... So how do you feel things are going for you now? Like You and Cody have kind of stopped that little bit of rub, uh, and then it seemed like you and Max might have been rubbing over some of the monodorks. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted the um, Wall of Roots. Oh, uh, okay. For Court of Calling, and uh, it's a good thing to sack to Eldritch Evolution to go get Yagma. Yep. Okay. So I ended up taking a Devoted Druid instead of Wall of Roots. Kind of similar, sort of. Yep. Um, and uh, once I took that, I was like, well, I might as well take Vizier. <laughs> so uh, as we were going by and we were talking about it, um, I, I missed the uh, the Devoted Druid uh, pickup as the draft was going. When we came back around and I saw Finale, and I thought, okay, with Elish Norn, to me, this seems like we're now going like Abzan all combos. And I was talking about the, the Ballista option with devoted druid and then i look up like oh there it is like this just right. read um so we were also when we were going through the draft just naturally we were very curious to see what was going to happen with the elish norn 
and where and what ETB effects that you were going to look at. We did, um, uh, Eternal Witness was brought up as an option by Professor X in the corner over there. Uh, we discussed yeah. possibly uh, not Tireless Tracker, the other one from Modern Horizons 2 that I can't remember the name of. Tireless Provisioner. Provisioner is possibly an option yeah. just to see where you were going to get your ETBs. And um, Yeah, so I mostly took it as a hate pick. Okay. Um, if you look at Alex's deck, it's pretty much all ETBs. Yep. Um, I don't actually think he has a single way to kill Elishnor. Nope. There is a. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's us, other that's than us. if he can oh, somehow so. prismatic ending it, because he can't ley line binding Elishnor. Nope. Yeah. That's, that's um, so unless he can good. make five colors somehow. Um, doesn't. I mean, with the treasure token, maybe. I don't know. But. Yeah. Um, and I was also a little worried that Sam might take it because Sam was picking like all these weird cards from the newer sets. Mm -hmm. So, and in white too. So I thought maybe Sam might want it. So I kind of picked it higher than I otherwise would. Oh, okay. Um, uh, was it actually on your list for today, or was it just something floating around in your no in your mind? It was something that was floating around. If other people were picking ETB stuff, and once I saw that Alex's deck was the adventurer deck, I was like, no. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. So you have Card of Calling, you have Finale, and you have Eldritch Evolution. Is that the package you're happy with for your search? Uh, yeah, I think it's fine. Okay. There's, but we've seen people play like similar lists, kind of with Allurin or maybe with Pod, and I didn't know if we would kind of see, you know, just peeling back curtain a little bit if we would get there with your. I list. might take Pod. I, I was thinking about that. So. But. And you get and, Pod into Gris, which is kind of cute too. Yeah, so uh, you have Terra Sunder, which is basically Vindicate Light as right. endpoint removal. How much further into white do you think you might end up flexing? Um, I don't think I'm going to play any other white cards. I might pick up a... I was thinking about picking up a Gadok Teague. Mm -hmm. um, it does affect me a little bit, but I think... Out of sideboard, Gadok Teague might be really good against Mike's deck. Yeah. And uh, maybe one of the other decks, too. Uh, Brandon's deck has, like, a lot of stuff that I could get with that, too. Maybe Kyle. Yeah. Uh, we were also trying to, to figure out how your land base was going to come together, as it seemed like a lot of the little pieces you wanted to pick up were kind of staked out. Brandon yeah. has both Nevamaya and Urborg. Yeah, and he also sniped... Uh, somebody sniped the bayou at some point and i was like that went by so do you feel like your mana base is still gonna like you still have options in front of you like there's still a lot of them we so you took twilight yeah. Mire, right? you got um, i took twilight Mire to help out with your alt messenger yeah uh i might be picking like murmuring bosk or something like that okay it's kind of like the triome yeah but you this can fetch it mm -hmm. um i was a little disappointed that all the fetch lands were taken so early i wasn't thinking that people would do that but I've also never played in a vintage Riches Redraft before. So. Yeah, the, the Fetchland run is always interesting to see when it happens and how long it lasts. There was a lot of competition, like you said, up top for Fetchlands, but it seemed to cycle or be mainly around blue and green, which does at least right. partially touch what you're trying to do. So you do lose a lot of value when somebody takes Misty Rainforest, for instance. You got? Did you end up with Verdant? I got Verdant. I picked it pretty up. Uh, yeah, and Windswept Teeth is gone, so now you have to make do with kind of off-color, quote-unquote, off-color fetches. Right. It, exactly. Now, uh, you don't think you're going to end up flexing into anything else, right? You're just pure, like, let's say Gruel with, sorry, not Gruel, Golgari with a touch of white. You don't think you're going to end up... Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do four. Uh, I can't really think of anything red or blue that I would even really would want in the deck. Yep. Um so I think that'll be it. Yep. I might pick up a, a collected company as okay. one more way to get stuff in the deck. Yep. Uh, out of the deck. Uh, I'm it. a little worried about uh, freaking graph figures cage and stuff. So yeah. We'll uh, have to see about that. Uh, does, does containment priest hit you, or does it just only deal yeah. with on? <laughs> yeah. Got it. So yeah, so, very. We, oh, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Like a fatal push might be an option that I end up taking. Um, well, there's uh, some options down. out there for you. Yep, yeah. you got options basically. You got pocket picks if you want to refer to them that way. So right. you said this is your first VRD. How do you feel that things are going overall for you, having lost out on some pieces? 
Uh, I, I like where the deck is. Uh, I don't know how well it's going to do or bad it's going to do, but I think it mm-hmm. looks cool. So Yeah. When we were talking about the list up top um, in the first few rounds, it kind of started to sort out, and we made the call back to, like, hey, this looks like a modern Yawgmoth list, and this seems like this is a list that you know what you're doing. This, this has got to be a list that you're familiar with, so you're going to rely a lot on that and then your play skill on top of it. Is that kind of what you planned on doing coming into this event? Yeah, so um, I play Yawgmoth combo in Modern, unsurprisingly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been playing it for a year. I've played it at, like, I don't know, somewhere between, like, four and six RCQs. Oh, wow. Um, I've had some pretty good success with it, so I haven't won any RCQs, which is kind of a bummer. I always tend to lose in the first round of top eight. Oh, that's... that's uh, great. But, uh, you know, so I was like, well, I know all the lines with the Ogmoth, mm-hmm. and he is a 2-4 two, a two protection from humans. Sometimes that's good. Yeah. He doesn't die to bolt or a braid. Mm-hmm. Um, it can block humans all day so i thought it was good and uh limited also because it's removal it draws cards it just seems like a good card to pick so as soon as i knew that that was an option i could do i was pretty on board with it yeah so you you settle on yagmoth what can i do to power up the deck and then kind of play on that so this is uh interesting question because i have my own feelings on this how much do you like grist as a card for what it does. Uh, I love Grist as a card. Like being able to do not like it. So I, I haven't played the Yagmoth deck in, in Modern. I played Alluren for a while in Legacy um, for play testing. And it's not that I dis- dislike it. It just seemed to never live up to the hype that it got. But my experience was, like I said, like real narrow with it. Just, just that yeah. one. Uh, in Modern pretty good uh you can get it with your uh cords and stuff like that mm-hmm. it's a, the the real value of it is that it's a removal spell that you can tutor up with a cord yes that's kind and, of how i that's how i saw it in the in alluring was just like i need something to deal with this onboard presence i'll get grist minus put my uro into the graveyard because that was part of the list and then whoop, do that that yeah, makes sense so you have Groff messenger to deal with that Strangle Root Geist, you basically, you know, other pieces of the Yawgmoth package, I assume, will show up that's going to work with Grist the Hunger Tide. Right, like so a Hapatra or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, you, you think it's going to play well here? We'll see. <laughs> Fair I think enough. it depends on uh, my thought thesis, honestly. Like, my game plan is probably going to go off turn three or four pretty consistently. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just matters. If I can interact with, with, I think my ideal is like turn one interaction, yep, or maybe turn two, um, and then turn three, four, do my thing, and hope that that wins me the game. Yeah. So coming back a little bit to VRD, how do you feel about VRD as this is your first foray into the format, right? Yeah, I've never done this. It's pretty cool. I like it. Um, I think it's cool that. You get to see what other people are picking. You can like counter pick and stuff, and it seems like a really sweet format. Yeah. Have you um, you've cube drafted before? No. Oh, you've never cube. Okay. I was going to ask how they compare. Okay, interesting. Usually, yeah. usually it's like I don't want to say RCQs, but rest in peace, Grand Prix. Yep, that was a, a popular option. So. I used to go to those too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, did you come into this event with just the Yog with uh, Yog Will? Sorry. Yawgmoth list in pocket, or did you have a couple that you were deciding in? Um, I was thinking about maybe playing Boggles. <laughs> oh. But uh, okay. I didn't want to lose all my friends. Uh, all right, that's and, understandable. Uh, it's mean, also a really easy deck to hate. Like, if I just go, like, Boggles, and then people start going, like, Lily of the Veil, Shieldred's Edict, yep. uh, then I'm just kind of like, meh. <laughs> I guess I got. We find Whereas, insects like, show at up. least Yogmoth plays real creatures. Yeah, and it's val. It's like they have value by themselves, right. not just. Right. Oh, nope, I think we're getting. Are back you being tapped? All right. All right. Thanks for stepping in, Adrian. Well, hopefully, I'm very right. talkative, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> All right. No, we have a workout yeah. for you. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. 
So I think the only thing you miss as you were stepping out was Max attempted to pick up a Nissa that was already taken and ended on Carnage Tyrant. Right. Okay. And then I heard some interesting things out there. Um, you know, just a few things. Uh, Max defends his library of Alexandria pick, says it's just it's just too good when you open with it. And if not, it's just a land. And it's better me than other people. That's fair. And when we were talking about it, I said, if you want to hear about the value of Library of Alexandria, it's Caleb Derward you want to talk to. Uh-huh. But everything about that is in Vintage Cube Draft. Right. And the value there. And I, I agree with, with Max on the, the pick and defending it, but I think this might be through the lens of Vintage Cube Draft. I, 100%. Uh, Cody did not want the manager. Uh, he was oh. exploding, but the two double blue just seemed to be too much of his mana base. Yep, he, that makes sense. He, he doesn't want a lot of doubles. He doesn't even want the Dothy Voidwalker necessarily. He just didn't want other people to have it. Okay. And he said he could bring it in if he needs to, but it wasn't there, but it just felt like a spot to grab it as a possibility. But he's not really looking for the double mana call. Yep, which makes sense. So I was looking through Kyle's list after the Mox Opal pick, and we have Vault, Monolith, and then nothing until we had Painter Servant, Helm of Obedience. Nothing until we had Sapphire Medallion. And yeah, my son weak stone. Yeah. Oh, sorry, my son and weak stone. Right. What Urza kind makes, of Urza makes artifacts? Okay, we have Ensnaring Bridge now. At what point in time do you think we've hit density for Mox Opal out of a non-aggressive artifact deck? Have we hit it? Um, you know, I think that we're going to see it right now, right? Like, and I've run enough Urza that I, I'm pretty good at this. Uh, I think you're looking with Urza for the token. You're looking at probably eight to nine artifacts. Okay. Uh, don't forget, he can also and likely will pick up the artifact lands. Oh, that's right. They are, and those are not super contested. key to the old yep. the format. So, uh, right, Mr. Have... Wizard stepped out for a second, so we're not going to have any new cards to pull up, uh, but we have a strong deed here. You know, mm-hmm. very uh, good card. Doesn't see a lot of play, but it is definitely potent. For this far down the list, absolutely. What a great sweeper. Yeah. Does Powder Keg get played often? I haven't seen it. Okay. Uh, Badlands showing up the mana base here. So, looking at Brandon, Cody, Alex, and Max. Those are the four people that could Field of the Dead. That's um, right. We are still floating Field of the Dead. Yeah, particularly if they mix their basics with snow and non-snow. And we won't know that until they build. Right. Yep. Okay. Uh, unless they just draft Field, <laughs> which will probably mean they probably are. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I meant, sorry, uh, Max has enough non-basics already that if you were to pick up another one or two it seems like he might not need to diversify with snow but it just right. helps overall yeah yeah, but sure. yeah. it helps psychrift with the fetches because you can just go grab one or the other but, you know. yep psychrift right. this is psychrift for the board probably we talked about some options costing too much mana now this isn't overloading psychrift for seven isn't something that costs too much or do we just see it as a value to mana play it's it's often a value two mono play, and then I mean the thing about this format Without is side. it goes it's fast or or slow. There's re- the middle is not often right. Yeah. So you're either either you're never going to overload it, or that overload is going to be big. Yeah. Yep. Brandon seems pretty frustrated. The hex drinker Sylvan library round ate him up, and at that point he was just like it's audible time, and he's throwing this together. I know he mentioned. Jun to me last night, mm-hmm. but he told me he wasn't ready to do it. He hadn't thought about it. Okay, so I think well, he's trying to wing. Yep. Ooh, I like the Kaza. So Alex is really running into the domain with the Kazu and the Triome here. Yes. So uh, Savai Triome is which one? Do you remember? Is it the Abzan? Uh, Abzan already went. That's uh, Adrian took that one. It's uh, the Mardu Triome. Triome. The Marcus, yeah, there you go. Okay. Uh, the so, Kabu is a nice card. Yep. Power t- it, domain is power toughness equal to the number of non uh, number of basic. 
types you have. Whenever it attacks, discard a card if you do draw a card. So rummage. And then the other option is exile up to one target card from a graveyard. So we have... Sam grabbing Paladin class. This is a card I like a lot. Uh, so it... The first step is protects your spells on your on your turn. Uh, so spells your opponent's cast during your turn cost one more. Yes. Level two is your creatures get plus one plus one. Yep. And level three, which if you ever get to, which is fine, which is whenever you attack, target creature gets plus one plus one for each attacking creature and gains double strike. Mm-hmm. Which is so. pretty decent, although. We haven't seen anything bigger than like two or three power power out of Sam, so we're just looking at a little a lot of little low to the ground creatures. That's fine. Yeah. I mean so we have a nice and the classes as a whole. I'm starting to see a little more of them. I think a lot of them are kind of people are exploring that space. I've had a really good success with Artificer class. Yeah. That uh there's a legendary one too that makes all your legendaries cost like a green and a red less. Actually, that's the Bard class, the red-green one. But yep. And I am contemplating a Bard class uh, legendary deck coming up after um, one comes out. Yeah, there's a lot of options in there, especially uh, when you look at the... Uh, I can't remember the name. Oh, man. She comes in, like, every Rav set and does... She's a Gruul legend that basically makes mana for you. Oh, what's her name? Not sure. Uh the mythic spoiler, oh, um, like Kolda, like the one that Rada, 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 yeah, Erda Keld or whatever it is, yeah. No, this is not the art. Paladin is not the artifact one. Uh, Paladin class taxes and then pumps. Yeah, so it's going to provide a nice anthem for Sam to get a lot of her small creatures through. Yeah, Cody's tanking for a bit here. Yep. So the reason I asked about Psychrift and the, the overload cost is because aside from being in in uh, the same spot as Echoing Truth on the curve, it really is just the fact that maybe the game will be protra- pro- protracted enough to overload right. it. Exactly. Yeah. So Hercules Recall, solid, solid value here. Yep. I'm very curious to see what Brandon's... Uh, that is a twist. pick. What a twist. <laughs> we can definitely get there with this list in terms of mana production. Yeah. Um, has him been taken yet? No, not yet. Okay. And he's got Urborg, so I, I could see him. And by he's got a lot of doubles, but he's a greedy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there are enough. He's a greedy fetch- boy. Yeah. There are enough on color fetches and dual lands to cast him. Oh, Adrian with the apocalypse. That is, a, is that a late shield of the apocalypse, or has this... It's new enough, it's hard to say. That was going to be the, the follow-up, yep. Yeah, it's yeah, new enough, it's hard to say. It, it hasn't found a home yet. Yep. Uh, so yeah, it's late by where it's gone so far. Yep, all right, so Kyle picks up Terminus. Uh, Sam already has... Sam's already driving with the top down, so we'll probably see Predict at some point, you think? So there's the Grove Punishings package that I thought Alex yep. might take. Further lean top is is interesting here. Yeah, we can't ride with the I top. I would like down. to see from Sam counterbalance, but I don't think she's there yet. <laughs> well, I, I thought oh, there's the rest in peace. I thought there's maybe Kyle would try and pick that one up and then predict just to kind of put that package together with Terminus because Terminus seems. Uh, I mean, he's got Jace, so he could. Yeah, he can keep floating there. it. Terminus just seemed like a wing and a prayer if you were going to look for a it wrath. Does. It does. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. No. Scavenge you is another valuable pickup. So, hmm. Yeah. What's the name oh. of the dinosaur that eats your graveyard from Ixalan? Or your opponent's graveyard? Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember. The one that eats it one at a time? Yeah. I'm guessing that Crocs is under Brandon and it just got entered in the wrong spot. 100%. Oh, okay. Uh, it was just pointed out to me by Caterberg that uh, he also has personal tutor for the yes. terminus, and he also has mystical tutor. Oh, okay. I'm so far back. 
in that in this draft. So there's the Croxa. Also a very solid reanimate target. I wonder if we'll see a bit of the scam package out of Brandon. Grief hasn't been taken yet, neither has Persist or Unearth. Yeah, it depends on how far he wants to go in on that. As I said, I know he's doing this off the wing and the cuff, so. Yeah. Sunken Ruins to help bolster out our color requirements. Oh, Doesn't that cost a million? That's what I see. No, there's one. Oh, so this is just, oh, this is the new super pacifism. Oh, okay. So just, hey, you, you're not doing things. And including permanence, so you can just shut off a land. You can shut off a Tolarian Academy with that. It doesn't say anything about mana abilities. Jeez. Oh, okay. I thought it, it said permanent in the next part. So that's why I was, I was looking at the permanent part. Can attack or block. Okay. Activated those can't be activated. Right if I reach from. Yep. Makes sense. Oh, nice. Neshoba Brawler. I know Lightning Bolted in one of his buddies up there is a fan of this. Yep. Uh, very aggressive domain creature. <laughs> These last couple picks are basically the modern deck that's currently floating around. Yeah. Where you just power up your, your Kavu and your Brawler and just truck in. Yeah. I like what Alex is showing here. It's yeah. Got, it's a it's got Moxie. It's got the REB and the Pyro out of the board. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I love the Dark Depth package in this, but I think it's probably too cute. There's a lot of flexibility in the way this deck can be construction, <laughs> constructed. Sam's like, I'm just hate hateful. Hating everything. Hating you. Oh, God. You gotta love it. The, did she pick up any non-basics? I don't think so. I think she stayed out of the land fight yep. completely. Wow. So, projecting this from pick one. Oh, she's got, yeah, her one land gets a basic. It's Prismatic yep. Vista. <laughs> Go, Sam. Wow. So we already have Leovold coming from Oh, he's going to have to start hitting his thoughts here soon. Yeah. So I'm going to be interested to see what it happens. Like, I'm looking at what I know. He's got one non saucy card, mm -hmm. and then everything else, or two non saucy cards, or one non sauce, one kind of sauce, and a whole bunch of like. Pure H and M, whatever that pure British sauce they love so much. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, it, it, things did get a little interesting for Cody, but I like the Baleful Strix pick. Ice Fang Coddle definitely says I'm going to be playing Snow Basics. Astrolabe, a card you mentioned earlier on, might also be on Cody's radar to help him in. fill out that Ice Fang Coddle pick. Yeah, like right now, he, you know, he's still picking catch up. Somewhere he's going to move to some KC Masterpiece. And uh, eventually he's going to kick it up, and it's going to be one of those like artisanal catch ups that like no one really likes, but everyone acts like they do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's something that runs you forty dollars. Yeah, one of those Cody? pretty ones they made themselves that just yeah tastes like vinegar and sriracha. Oh my god! So we have in Cody's list, Brazen Borrower and Spell Stutter Sprite alongside Bitter Blossom. So there's also yeah. the opportunity to pick up V Click, which has been floated super far down. Yeah, comparatively. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of and options Sam here. has Caracas. She would be yes. really good to pick up V-Click. Sam and has Kyle Caracas. has Narset, so he would be good to pick up V-Click. Okay, yep, for sure. Reality shift. Good, solid sideboard pack. Yeah. Card, man. Just exiles the creature. This card needs some respect on its name. <laughs> <laughs> this is also <laughs> hilarious with the number of top deck tutors. Yeah, you're yeah. like... Oh, here you put that fancy thing on top that you know that spell you want. Okay, that spell you want's now just a tutu. If if like this is the kind of card that if commander players are watching, they've been screaming for because this out is of, a premiere, and it's out of color pie, right? It's yep. out of color pie. It, 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 it's controversial. Yes, good nature's claim, solid. Grug okay. is going like, hey, y'all forgot about me. Yep, but Badlands oh. did go before Scrub, so I think that states chats. 
thought that Badlands gets treat, treated worse than Scrub. So I, I don't think Kyle's going to do this. I would like to see out of Kyle a scroll rack. There and help juggle the top. Yeah. The second kept neck. Okay. Uh, so the second kept net allows you when you have an insert sorcery on top. Yep. Not the mindful. Uh, a god eternal. Uh, when you have an insert sorcery on top, you can reveal it and basically cast it for free. If yep. You put it in your hand uh, or cast a copy of it. So you can like be putting temporal mastery on top of your library over and over. Continuously. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's better with time walk. I mean, yep. mastery is pretty expensive for it. Yep. Uh, there's so, a needle. We missed Max picking up Ruffalo's Landmark Emissary into Priest of Titania. Two picks that are curious considering you don't have Yagamoth and you only have like three other elves. He doesn't have, I mean, he, yeah. He's got, I think, enough elves for the priest, but without um, Yagamaya, Ruffalo seems questionable. There's yeah, especially. Yeah. You pick up Firelit Thicket, which is fine. It's filters, so it definitely helps. Just your red, but it's not the it, it's not the snow duel from Call Time that has Papyrus type on it. it is yeah. late Bone Crusher mm -hmm. starts phenomenal. Um, Alex, I could have seen this out of Alex earlier. All right, come on, Cody, move into the spice. Show me With the curse totem. No, that's not spice. It's good. All right, and it's really good against Max. Oh, yeah, just shut down activated abilities, 100%. Yeah. It's good against Max and Adrian. Yep. Which is weird, considering that we're now kind of in sideboard territory with, the, with that deck. Well, that's fine, because, I mean, that's what... The, Cody's doing the smart thing here. His last handful, no one's going to touch. Okay. Um, so he's like, I'm going to take these sideboard cards that people might touch. Mm. That is, like, this is the best draft fealty I've seen out of Cody, right? Like, Okay. He's not got sidetracked by sexy. He's not let when other people are doing and throwing off too much. Just sticking to the list. Sticking to the plan. Yeah. And but but waiting to see what they're doing to pick a sideboard cards and playing smart, you know. Yep. Yeah. So like flame. Yep. Out of Sam, we have the early Stone Forge, and I believe just Caldera. Caldera. Yes, we got Caldera. And Lion Sash now. So we have two yep. pieces of equipment to tutor up. And Rite of Flame, Relic. So I wonder if there are any more pieces of equipment that Sam's been floating, because nobody else is really uh, on I mean, that plan. I can see a Batter Skull or a Sword. Yep. There's also a Mother of Runes. Skull is the most likely. Yep. There's a Mother of Runes and Giver of Runes that have kind of been floated as well. Nobody's really been in that lane besides Sam. No, and I could see Kyle or Sam grab one of those. Actually, or Sam could grab uh, Scrolls to go with the Hive. Oh, that's right. Which would also Scrolls. be good for Kyle because it's an artifact for Urza and Academy. Yep. There's the Thought Scour. Okay. So we see Alex pick up Silence. Do, yeah, do we see sure one? Sideboard just, card? Yeah, he just sideboarded that. Okay. Okay. I don't expect to... that to be anything other than, like, I'm going to try to stop Mike from going off. Exactly. You don't have a flashy turn. You're looking to... Right. Mike writes a flame, and he goes silent. Yep. You know. Exactly. I, I start this chain with a sorcery. I say, no, your Yogg's will goes away. Yep. Right. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, I think, though it's double white, I think Ranger Captain of Eos probably would have been the better pick. Oh, okay. Vinia, Azorius Renegade. I maintain that card should have been a vintage all star from the moment it was printed. Pretty good against Max, against Kyle. Like this is this is solid. Yeah, I it's a very, Next very good area G. Exactly. Exactly. So Cody. All right. Every every time I get to Cody's got? pick, Mr. Wizard's over here rubbing his hands together. <laughs> is it gonna happen? Here it is. Are we gonna see the sauce? A hush falls over the crowd. Nope. Zagos Triumph. Nope. All right, so short it up. <laughs> Which Triumph is this it. one, Mr. This is the Sultai Triumph? That's the Sultai, yeah. Yep. 
I mean, I think his only one drop so far is Hex Green Career and yep. Ignoble or Noble. So mm-hmm. quite often he can just fetch Zach off, off the opening turn if he doesn't have one of those. <laughs> Savannah was taken much earlier on. I, I also think by Brandon. <laughs> no, all right. He didn't get, he did not get it. All right. Yeah, so the plat goes. So we still have some. Dual I think Ranger Cap is also uh, a good luck here in Adrian's deck as we get towards the bottom end of things. Yeah. Cause now, well, I mean, so what I'm worried about from Adrian's deck is I see a lot of main deck cards and not a lot of sideboard cards. Makes sense. Yeah. You have the two combos running together and you have the ability to play one or both. And if you play both, then yeah, you definitely have the t- uh, too many playables. Yeah, not enough and that's often problem. again the VRD, you know, mistake in some ways. Yeah, for the first time players. Um, so we have Chalice. Mm-hmm. I do kind of like the idea though of drafting enough main deck playables to almost have an entire side deck. A term I hate when you refer to just your side board. Right, but when you have two distinct lists that you're able to put together, I think some have tried it. I'm not a fan of it. I don't think it's as good as people think it is. Yep. I mean, I've had one where like I had a wheels reanimate package, and I had a secondary package that I could side out the reanimate mm-hmm. against one deck that had like five pieces of graveyard hate. Yeah, so it was like yep. I'm going to side out these reanimate targets and reanimate spells. I'm going to bring in grindstone and painter and Urza. Yes. But like that's still pretty Nyx though. Right. That, that, that is a green mana. Yep. We definitely have some pips. That is for sure. Yeah. Yeah. To to Katerberg's point, you have to have divergent plans, and it would be something like being a spells based combo deck that can then transform into something that plays off the stack, either in combat or out of the graveyard, and make people right. so. If you think about alluring, I'm yep, feeling better about Max's deck as this comes along. Yes. It, like, it's definitely, I like this elves package into this like elven show, basically. Yep. Well, elf and sneak. Elf attack. Yeah, elf attack. Sneaky elves. Yeah, sneaky elves. But yeah, if you play on the stack with something like a learn and then hand break into reanimator, somebody has to side for one plan versus the other. And then game three is very questionable for them. What? What? Sound wave? Was that pick? Was it okay. Not yet. I'm excited. We're just playing with our soul. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, there is a superior captain. Laser beak. Has any? Oh, has anybody played Slicer yet? Have we seen that? I played? don't think so. Okay. I think he's the one that might be the most playable. Yeah. It, I think that, that kind of rolls into the idea that the red deck of any sort, be it mono red and kind of red deck wins small versus like chunky red has disappeared. Because look, we, everybody's kind of strayed from that. But if you wanted to bring that deck back, it seems like Slicer is one of the premier cards you should be uh, engaged with here. Yeah, but you can cast Slicer for three, probably makes him the most. Yep. Three, two, first strike haste, not too bad. And it has, does it have Goad on the other side? Can you cast it for three? First strike, first Slicer deals combat, damage a player, convert it at end of combat. So it turns back to the three, four, with double strike and haste. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, you may have that player gain control of Slicer. Ooh, okay, so we got a march finally. Oh, and it's just a spelling error. Okay. I like this Glissa. What does that Glissa do? When she she's first rate death touch. And when she hits, she draws you a card or destroys uh-huh. an enchantment or returns up to three counters or takes off three counters off of target permanent. Okay. So not only does this beat face, but it also helps the planeswalker problem. Oh, is are, is this the spice? No, oh, this is no. that's just basic. <laughs> that's basic code. That's somewhat spice. Okay, it's boring at this point. 
All right. But uh, it is pretty good against a couple of these decks. Like it will. Re- well, interestingly, against Kai, against Max, mm-hmm. it could either wreck face or hit oh, yeah. and then be whatever. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. It's also oh god against Mike, a deck full of one mana value. Yeah, spells. against Mike, it it destroys him. That's it. It makes Mike cry. Yeah. Okay. There's yeah. The oh two. my god, the world's latest value. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if Sam comes through, she takes Necro. Value. Yep. Yeah. The underdrafted Necro, or the properly drafted Necro, I'm not quite sure. It if you don't have a storm deck, do you draft Necro? It, it's hard to. It, he's got both rituals, so. Well, because well, that's what I'm saying. Is outside of this deck, outside of the ritual deck, the storm deck, do you do you draft Necro? Is it that much of a value card? Watchman calm. Okay. I mean it. It does a job. Yeah. I think there's better versions of this. Um, oh. So, Mike, we're getting to the same issue a little bit as Adrian. Mm-hmm. Where's his... This is all main deck stuff. This is a we lot have of main three, deck cards. But we have three... These are not divergent plans. They're all the same plan, but three ways to win the game. I guess Thassa's Oracle could be considered divergent because the win con is different, but the idea is the same. Play spells until you win. There's there's the last of the like that's the best blue black creature in the format I think. Fallen Shinobi. Shinobi. Yep. That card's ridiculous. That player exiles the top two cards until the turn. You may oh, turn. okay. <laughs> Wait, what's the one from Return to Rav that everybody was playing in standard that also nibbles the top of the library? The Specter. Oh, yeah, uh, Thief of Sanity. Thief of Sanity. Is that just... It's... I mean, it's a three for a two-two. I mean, the thing about Shinobi is you're getting in with your dork, and yep. then your ninja is doing in, so they don't see it's coming. Yes, yeah, yeah. That, obviously, the hands down, four mana for a five-four is way better than three mana for a two-two. And you get to cast it for free, where you don't... Mm. Get yeah, you can't... You get to cast two spells for free, effectively. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no loot tree. There's no nobody's playing Pyromancer tokens. Exile and Elective and Thirst take out uh, Luris for Mike. At least as a companion. Yep. Vexing Devil. Did Ooh. Sam still play Luris? No, she's got Cauldron and Teferi. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Murmuring Bosk. Adrian did mention that while we were talking. Okay. So Shore of Lands a little bit. Yep. The original Triome. Oh, big, big tree on that one. As they yep. say. <sighs> no, Look, yeah. Doran is a hell of a card. Talk about those. <laughs> There's got to be the, something before the layer. The caverns are like Bruno. We don't talk about it. No, no, no. Important, again, sealing up his um, ability to put things on top of the deck yep. without top. There's no predict. Ah, I was right. There was a set of Triomes before the layers. Yeah, but now, uh, is that a trial? <laughs> or is that the world's worst filter land? All right, right. metamorphose into big progenitus. So again, more of the the sneak package, right? Or the natural order, at least natural order. So we talked about Ruffles, we talked about Priest of Titania. We believe there's enough of a presence yeah. of elves in the deck to do that. What about Crater Huff or Pain it's- Bacon? Yeah. By either of those I could see. Okay. I think Again, enough. I'm wondering on his sideboard versus whatever else was going on here at this point. Yep. Yeah. yeah, which is funny because that was his critique from his draft last time is that he didn't have a sideboard. And he told me when he came in, I'm not doing that again. And I'm looking at it going, I mean, he's got some Brotherhood's in, Grafticker's Cage, mm-hmm. uh, Transfer. Nope. Uh, no, nope, Katie Brick, there, there's no tempo deck. Nobody ever really displayed wanting to play is it tempo of, of any sort. Without Mason, it feels like that, that archetype is underrepresented. No, I mean, Mason doesn't do that one a lot. It, it happens a lot online. Um, I think it's more popular than it is good. Mm-hmm. But like when it wins, it wins big. 
yeah. Kino, uh has done some amazing things with it online, for sure. All right. There's the verdict. Our non-conditional wrath. Yeah. Extra space at the end of the... So we have the opportunity to do a little birthing pot action here for Adrian, a card they did mention while we were discussing during break. There's, I mean, there's only two real blue decks. Sam's got some, but she's just not nope. that type of blue. Nope. Not at all. Papatra, this year, what is? Papatra's combos with Yogg. It's the other part of the most traditional Yogg combo. Is it? Oh, okay. I, yeah. So Kato is the one that he had in the Friends and Family, and he won several games with it. He's a mm -hmm. big fan of it. Um, and that's the last of the semi sauce. So I expect about five or six runoff of main deck sauce here coming up. All right. The creature. He's slow rolling the audience. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. So th this is this works with uh, Garal's Messenger and Undying Hapatra. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. And okay. It, it basically, you can make snakes every time you put a Yog token on them. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then stack those snakes to make more yog tokens. Yep. All right. That makes sense. I am teasing it more than a 14-year-old girl, but that sounds probably sexist and ageist. <laughs> and I expect better of you, Mr. Caterburn. Gideon Blackblade. That Your is... daughter one day will be a 14-year-old girl, and she expects better of you as well. Gideon Blackblade is a three mana value, Gideon. Right. Yep. Yeah. Four, four, up to one other target creature you control gains your choice of soup and exile target. Knowledge. So... We've picked up some um, aggressive mana value creatures, I, things lower on the curve. Yeah, I would ex possibly expect uh, getting an ally of Zendikar out of her. Again, it's one of Brandon's favorites, so she's probably seen him draft it quite a bit. Yeah, I'm I'm curious if, we're, if we'll see GT from Sam in the last handful of picks. Surprised. It just seems so good to not play. Yeah, it's also like the Thalias are really good at carrying it. Yep, exactly. So the last four picks, aside from Ghostly Prison, uh, so Lion Sash, Lavinia, Thalia, Gideon, all great at carrying a GTA. Yeah. Hey, there's my Legion War boss. Yep. All the way down here at 42. Well, it answers life. There? It answers life, the universe, and everything. Oh, so is ideas unbound. Not the double blue, draw three, discard three. Yeah. I wonder. I'll tell wonder you a card that has been, I keep saying I need to remember this card exists more, a cult of Tiffany. Um, what card, is that? Draw X, discard X, create a 1-1 one, one token for each card type discarded. <laughs> wow. Like, I keep people seeing people take this in BRD, and I go, why do I keep forgetting this card exists? Hmm. Draw X cards, then discard. Yeah. I guess for each, maybe it's just the the card type thing that's part of that. Yeah, but I mean, even if you're just netting two or three, two, you know, two things out of there, you know, a land and a creature, you're still betting two one ones off of what you were doing anyway. Or for sure, for sure, or even just an artifact creature. Yeah, which are fairly but common yeah, in the format. The double up. Yeah, it's like the. Um, that one green black Baldur's witch from com that commanders play. Oh like, boy! She stacks like an artifact creature, and it's ridiculous because it counts as two of the three types. Mm. Impulse. Okay. I'm. I like the shadow spear out of Alex. So it looks like we're gonna play down the curve. Okay, Sam with boss. Ah, oh, sword of body and mind. We're gonna mill some people out today. Uh, you know, a decent amount of green in the field. Mm-hmm. Seems okay. Absolutely. Definitely. Huh? Would it be better than Feast and Famine? Um, Probably. I don't know. I, mean, I think Feast and Famine is generally better, but I think in this field, this is probably, like the protection is probably better. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So you keep the protection from green on Feast and Famine, but you trade blue for black. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. to try the new blue-black one. When it oh, that Demir sword looks... That, that sword looks insanely good. 
All right. Don't let me down, Cody. So with the the new Demir sword, it's what a double. Can't remember you the name of the keyword. Two. That's it. So you surveil two, and then you get to. And then you can cast a spell that costs two or less from your graveyard for free. I think. Yes. Yeah. The surveil two plus a cooler snapcaster mage. Sword of Once and Future. Yeah. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to a player, surveil two. Then you may cast an infinite sorcery spell with mana value two or less from your graveyard without paying its cost. It will be put into graveyard <laughs> exile. Cody's slow rolling the sauce so much. It's ridiculous. I, I'm done hyping him. I'm over. Yeah. I will no longer be his flavor flavor. <laughs> I put my clock down. Now I, he's going to do it. Yeah, I, I think we can issue Batter Skull here at Caterberg. We have Cauldra complete, which you can continue to move around. I just don't know if you can forego GT in this format. It seems like if you can yeah. land an early GT, I don't think you want to go pressure. over the three equipment in that package. So, I mean, she could sideboard the Lion Stash and have a third main deck and then switch it in and out. Yep, absolutely. I mean, yeah, have a... it's really hard to forego Battle Skull, but I've done it once. Yep. There's the lettuce. Oh, so Chain of Smog into either Professor Onyx or Weatherbloom Apprentice on the yeah, wheel. Apprentice, because he's got the cheaper ways to get him. Yep. Spell Seeker. Professor? Yeah. Is that a late Spell Seeker? She doesn't, I mean, she either goes, sometimes she goes pretty early because someone really wants her and is afraid, yep. or she doesn't go at all. Like, in this mm -hmm. time, like, I think he reads this right. No one else was fighting for this. No, not at all. I mean, Mike would be the only one, but I don't think he wants to do that at creature speed at a three cost. Yeah, uh, nobody has Merchant Scroll as well, which I think also fits well into that deck. Yeah, Scroll doesn't go super often, uh, so it's another one that, like, how how much do you try to go into your tutors? Yeah, but I will tell you, Cody's sideboard opposition agents is looking stupid in this draft. Oh, yeah. Where sometimes opposition agents just garbage. Yep. That, that yeah, was that range, mid-range, it's all the same. <laughs> I think if you're going to play Sash in the main, then I think you're going to forego a lot of what happened in the middle of Sam's draft, where you spend some time picking up these protection spells and like mid range. I'll tell you what, Sash in the main is really good with is Layla. All right, yeah. Because you're exiling cards from your own yard and then making Layla bigger. Yep, for sure. All right, Max, what you got for us? Seething Song? Okay. Into Worm Coil. Well, at least Worm Coil works with Channel, so now we have two Eldrazi and Worms. Yep. Coalition mm -hmm. Relic. All right. Those that is a card I just don't value that highly in Vintage nah, Cube Draft. I just I, don't. I'm down on that pick here. Now, if he had more Legendaries, I could be up on the new Relic. Yep. And it's... In a two-color deck, though, knowing that Snow Basics are free, couldn't you also have just taken Astrolabe, which is still wide open? Right. I mean, Astrolabe doesn't make you mana, but it draws you a card. Yeah. It filters. Which is what I think you want a little more. It's not like you're paying... You're, it's not like you're going to be playing a lot of... Right. And don't forget every one of his artifacts tapped for blue because of Urza that he has right now. So. Yep. For sure. I just don't think there's a lot of overly expensive cards in this deck that you need to use coalition. Well, sideboard make. territory, but one of the you best sideboard forward. cards in the game. Energy Flux? The or Revoker? Flux. Yeah. Re Revoker is good too, and this is a pretty late Revoker. Okay. How many picks we got left? Uh, three. three. Did he audible? Did he chicken out? No. Look. <laughs> no. One, two, nope. It's, it's, there's three of them. Oh I my need... god. All right, so Max, but not Max, sorry, Mike just kind of taking mm -hmm. up the last bit of protection they need for that combo turn. Orcish sure, Lumberjack. Sure. Orcish wow. Lumberjack. Hey, who needs a Black Lotus? I've got a Black Lotus at home. It's true. 
I have lost to that card in cube in some ridiculous ways, and then it made me hate my soul. <laughs> the majority of what uh, Alex was oh, doing for a while, short of playing Minskin Boo, was part of the Apple Jacks legacy deck for a minute. I do like the Skydiver. That's a yep. solid pick from Sam. It's going to go that late. You might as well. The evasive to the 2 1, right? Yeah, it's a 2 1 flyer. Yep, and sometimes you'll just get value stealing a rock. Yep. We got Black Lotus at home. So, <laughs> we have a Blacker Lotus at home, too. All right, Temple Garden. We're, we're just eating our vegetables again with this draft. Yep. Packed into packed. Okay. Yeah. Well, so that's a sideboard pack for sure. Oh, yeah. Th this is Mike's just basically shoring up. shoring up. Just trying to get his edges again. Like this solid sideboard card I was saying here. That would be Spirit. Spirit of the Lab. Yep. Good side that, card. That's Rule of Law. Spirit, right? No, can't uh can't draw more than one card. Oh, okay, okay. Rule of all the idol of rhetoric. Idol of okay. And here we come. There we go. Professor X, please. We have our first attractions deck. So oh. What are the rulings for attractions in VRD now? Okay. So you get to build your attractions deck just like you would in a regular format. Yes. And then just like the attractions deck, at the beginning of the game, you randomize it. Yep. So we don't play. You have to draft the attractions. Um, you get to – so he has a list of 10 attractions that he's yep. brought. Um, an attractions deck must contain at least 10 attraction cards. And each card in an attraction deck must have a different English name. The deck must be chosen at the start of the tournament and cannot be changed between games or matches. And then, okay. so just like normal, he's going to randomize the attractions and play through it there. Play it where it lies. All right. So just picking that one attraction opens up the entirety of that possibility. Of the attraction deck. Yep. Right. And now this next two cards will also be attractions. All right. That's fair. And then for those interested, the same would go for stickers as well. Yeah. Okay. It just plays, we're just playing it by the standard, whatever they are, rules for constructed format. Yep. Makes sense. And there is a link from our friendly bot. That is our, our third person in our crew, Commander Data. So we have Professor X, Mr. Wizard, and Professor Commander Data <laughs> all Commander working Data. diligently behind the scenes here. <laughs> all of these people have replaced the our, our, our long lost companion, Mr. Raging Levine, who has left us to go east west to work for Wizards of the Coast. Uh, so he has been replaced, never in our hearts, but often in our room and sometimes at the bar. All right, so. Humility coming in. Outland Liberator is a super good card. Yep. Humility. Oh, man. Adrian is just living in Value Town now. Uh, yeah, Liberator solid sideboard stuff. So we're seeing some action there. Brush Fire Elemental. He's played that one before. Mm -hmm. So you think that with Outland Liberator's activated ability, it's more of a sideboard card than it is main deck, being able, despite the fact that it gets a lot of rocks? Yeah, I mean, you could main deck it, but I I feel in his list, I think it mm -hmm. has to be a sideboard card. Okay. I, he just got so many combo pieces that yep. something's got to be in the board. Okay. Otherwise, do you think it would be something with an ETB along the lines of Reclamation Sage? Something Absolutely. Like that? Okay. Uh, or the undrafted so far Lauren of the Third Path, which would be great with Sam's Spirit of the Labyrinth. Oh, yeah. 
Well, there's still opportunity for Sam. Actually, no, it wouldn't because she couldn't draw the second card either. So. Uh, oh, that is a uh, okay. So actually, no, it's each turn. So you activate Lauren on their turn. Their turn. After they've drawn, they can't draw a card, and you still get to draw a card. Max with the wheel and an undrafted field of the dead. Tanker Bloom is also another really good new one. And Hay White, Hair Wire Might. Hay Wire Might. A $3 uncommon for reasons. Yep. Yeah. Hay Wire Might is particularly good against a Cauldra Complete. Yep. Okay. So we're going with the old school summoners summoning trap instead of the MDFC from Zendikar Resurgent. Interesting. And then the, the monster manual. Yeah. Sure, let's do this. What? All right, I've read Monster Manual like once in my yeah, life. We're, we're, we're pulling it up. It's got, we got to figure out how to pull it up. <laughs> Scryfall, I think, is the option. All right, so it is It is an adventure. That is 100% correct. Oh, Kyle is a favorite of mine. This so Laser Kitten. Kitten has an interesting challenge for deck building mm -hmm. because. If you have too many creatures that you want to blink, you yep. can't trigger Displacer Kitten. But if yep. you have too many spells, you can't. So Kyle's in a good spot with it because what's really good with is blinking artifacts and planeswalkers because they also trigger it. Yep. So I it's, think he's made a, a wise choice here. And now I don't know if it's main deckable on his list. I, he's yeah. got a lot going on. I thought but, he might have. So mill five cards, then return a creature mill to your hand, and then may put a creature card. So just straight up kind of Elvish Piper. Except not nearly as vulnerable as a 1-1. One, one. Right. Yep. Yeah, or quick over anyway. Yep, uh, Adrian going back. Just fixing out the mana, for fixing the mana base. I thought we might have seen Displacer Kitten go earlier in Mike's deck, but Mike pushed his rituals down a bit. Yeah, it's really good with rituals, but Mike doesn't have the things he wants to blink with it. Fair. Well, wouldn't you just... Oh, yeah, there's, I mean, there's... Without a Snapcaster Mage or something else. Right, or like a Tameo yeah. to buy back uh, line, uh, Lotus Petal. Yep. Where you just cycle those. You just play Lotus Petal, tap it for a mana, bounce Tameo, get Lotus Petal back. and keep Yeah, because he had the LED that he could have done, done that. Well, he can do that with in uh, the will turn if you wanted to. Right. DK, Finder of Loss. Oh, wait. This is not an attraction. She is. She, when she comes in, she opens the attraction. And then when you roll, depending on what you roll, you get effects. Right? Oh, that's right. You have to start the attractions. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. Oh, there's the Astral Life. Astral Life. Nice. All right. Cabal Therapy. I don't know. Yeah. They're flashing that back. So that's an interesting one. Yeah, uh, there's the haywire might. Is the spies? Solid echoing truth. Like mm -hmm. Especially from this list compared to something like Cycler. Are we making a? Uh, I guess Alex is making a lot of tokens, so that makes echoing truth a lot more palatable than something like boomerang. Yeah. Also. Not double blue. Oh, there's the scroll. No G Tato. All right. So he's going to grab one more traction maker here. The most dangerous gamer. How many non-basics does Brandon have and is Field of the Dead? That's quite a few. A possible. Hmm. I don't see Field at this point. No, nobody's like, taken Field. I thought it would have been either Max or it would have been Alex <clears throat> later in the draft as there's the opportunity. Right. Seemingly at minimal cost. Okay, Chain Lightning. I don't know if this is a glow up for Young Wolf or not. 
making it into VRD at all? <laughs> well, you know, when there's a yog, there's, there's often a young wolf. That's true. Oh, okay. There it is. We're going to be, uh, we're going to be flickering Gilded Drake. Oh, you could. Yep. We're going to, we could displace well, our Gilded Drake. You control, so flickering the Gilded Drake doesn't actually. Oh, no, that is. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, because you can't resolve it that way. That's right. You could venture it, but you can't displace it. All right. When this last pick hits, I'm going to take five and then come back, and you can take five, Peter. Yeah, it works for me. And then we'll come back, and hopefully the draft will start uh, right around that time. So. Yep. Are we going to send somebody in to discuss, or? Um, no, we're just going to let them build. I, I think we're good on the interviews for a bit. We'll just okay. let them build. We started late, so I want to just not pull from the build time to maximize time efficiency at this point. Tech issues make us reconsider. <laughs> that is fair. All right, Max, what do you got? Tooth and nail. Ah! 2004 me is very happy that there we drafted we okay. both stage you into tooth and nail. Bit, oh, yeah. over these, and then we'll come back. Yep. We're not doing an interview. Well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're just gonna, since we were a little late starting, we're just going to... We're just going to truck on through. Okay, so from yeah, Max, it looks like we have two opportunities here, and uh, maybe two and a half, where we can play the sneak attack through the breach deck alongside Tooth and Nail, or we could break out into one versus the other. The the elves definitely help us power out this Tooth and Nail, there's, as there's no real way to cheat on a nine mana value sorcery. And at least not in this list. You have Nykthos to kind of help out with that Circle of Dreams Druid Druffalos to power out into a faster Tooth and Nail. But I would actually expect that to be in the sideboard. We lost Blightseal Colossus earlier on in the draft, so the Xenagos Blightseal one-shot is kind of off the table. So I don't know why we didn't... I don't think we audibled into World Spine Worm, but I guess doming somebody for 30 if Tooth and Nail was not on our list. We just picked something... Random at the end wasn't a decision, but that was another avenue you can take. So if I'm building Max's list, I'm probably just going to lean into Sneak Attack and the uh, Through the Breach, Game 1, try and Eldrazi somebody out, and then Game 2, if I need to, I can play a slower game, develop my board with Elves, play some value creatures in World Spot and uh, not World Spine anymore, Worm Coil Engine, Primeval Titan, and then eventually maybe tooth and nail into Emrakul or something else and play a, a longer game. That way it gives me two options. Kyle's deck started out pretty strong with Mishra's workshop and Narset. We thought we could see artifacts and or uh, wheels into something else. We kind of lost focus a little bit and eventually settled on Azor Control, which is, I think, going to be a decent look in this metagame. We have a fair amount of removal. We have Supreme Verdict. We have Terminus to help reset the board. Temporal Mastery, if we can just Miracle on extra turn, that is great for us, especially with the Urza setup that we have. Displacer Kitten is a little interesting. Like Steven said, this is a good spot for it. We just don't know exactly what we're going to be doing with it yet. And we don't know if the meld is going to work between the Might Stone and the Weak Stone and Urza Lord Protector. So this is a deck that, to me, seems like it needs a little bit of focusing, but all the pieces are there for a strong Azor control list. Adrian's deck just went down the expected path, except taking Emerald over Jet, which is a question I neglected to ask during the interview. Everything seems to kind of come out the way Adrian expected. We picked up everything we needed for the sideboard. It looks like people today did not respect Shieldred and let that one go really late. So we have some really good options for a game plan that isn't based around the Yawgmoth combo. We can play your standard kind of Saul Maka rock deck if you want. And there's the backup Chain of Smog, Wither Bloom, Apprentice combo that can just kind of win. Is it turn three-ish through a Monodork, turn four otherwise? I think we're in a really good spot to play a really long value game and definitely kind of drag the game's out in our favor. The longer we go, the better it's going to be for us. Brandon's list took a lot of twists and turns, and like Steven mentioned, this might be an off-the-cuff kind of jumped deck. We we see 
some red value spells to try and clean up the board. We have the Chain Lightning highlighted right now. That plays into that. We have Mind Twist that we might be able to power out earlier and try and take over the game that way when we do draw it early. Otherwise, we have our plans to hopefully draw out a longer game between our removal and then things like Kroxa. Beyond that, in this list, we still have Karn the Great Creator and Mykos and Flavis, which could just end the game on the spot if that is how we decide to go with our main. Allosaurus Shepherd was picked up in the middle of the draft, and I don't know how that's going to play out. The green element that we have is decent. It's a lot of dorks. It's Nyssa, but how that plays against the Rakdos half of the deck or plays with it kind of TBD. I don't actually know if we're going to be able to get there with a lot of the green aspects of the deck besides Nyssa and uh, Questing Beast. Uh, Cody's list, like we kept talking about, I don't want to call this, you know, bog standard soul type, but it seemed to do exactly what he wanted to do, which is just draft the cards that I know play well, that have a proven track record, and put my spice at the end so I can make sure that I've got everything I need to perform well today that I can take these games as long as I need to and pick up the win and then bring a little bit of spice with my attractions later on as they are very difficult to deal with once established. I think this is, for me, probably one of the most interesting decks of the day and definitely something I want to watch. I'd be watching throughout the day. I'd be hawking this list if I was on-prem. Stand list, I really like. As I said early on, it plays to a way I enjoy the game in modern we started out with what looked like it was going to be a Stoneforge Mystic package where Sam was just going to basically be playing, I thought maybe Azor Taxes or Azor Tempo. And we kind of stayed that way until we got down to about pick 16, where we started to pick up some of our protection spells in Balance, Dovin, uh, Skyclave Apparition, Caracas. It goes on for a bit into basically the Blightsteel Colossus is kind of when we came out of that. And we started taking some ways to interact on the smell on the on the stack. We have smothering tithe, which I think Steven said this is the first time this card's shown up in a VRD, which definitely has the opportunity to let Sam blow out a game very quickly, very easily. And shortly after that, Stasis repeal Orum's chant as a package to essentially shore up the game, if that is the direction Sam wants to take this. What I think Sam needs to decide on is how to build this deck. After we come out of this kind of protection package and then Isochron Scepter package, we move back into the Azor, hmm, I call it, I'll call it Azor Tempo side of things. We picked up a lot of great creatures that do a lot of great things. We picked up sort of body in mind. And now we need to figure out what game one looks like. Is game one going to be more about something like Isochron Scepter, Orm Chant, and a bit of control? eventually pulling up into Caldera Complete? Or is it going to be about attacking with creatures and sort of body in mind? Kind of TBD. We have we definitely have two strong options in front of us, and I think that decision is going to be made <clears throat> now. I don't think this is a decision that Sam would have been able to make during the draft. We'll kind of see how things, things shake out now. Mike puts this list in an interesting spot. As we noted as we were talking about this with chat, this is really one list doing three different things, and they're all spell-based. Every one of these things at its core is still spell-based combo. We have the Doomsday Package, which works with the Thassa's Oracle Kill, or you can try and set up uh, the Underworld Breach, a uh, small breach package. And if you don't play Doomsday, then you have a Thassa's Oracle Package because we picked up Demonic Consultation. Or we have a storm package with underworld breach and either <clears throat> brain freeze and or tendrils of agony, just a pure storm package. This is, I think Stephen pointed out, another one of those decks that kind of suffers from like early introduction to VRD, and we'll see where this list goes. There's again three ways to build this list, and we'll kind of figure out how Mike wants to play this one moving forward. But no matter what, I think this is a premier storm list. And then coming last, we have Alex's list, which honestly, 
looks like a great NEA aggro list for my money. There is a bit of a move into the domain aspect of things, picking up the triumphs. You have ways to additional ways to find those triumphs with crop ro- crop rotation, knights of the reliquary. You have a handful of fetches to just keep picking these up. So you can definitely play your domain package. You also have the initiative package that was picked up across all three colors in um, now, Cave the Chaos Adventure. Is it a way to abuse his Urza Saga? So Aside means- from Ren, no. Right. There's nothing to do with that. The Urza Saga might have been abandoned early on. Time Vault is completely for naught. Right, and that's fine. Yep, you don't, you don't need anything to go with that. You have Fable as a Mirror mocks. Breaker, but... And the Saga can get his mocks, but that's really it. Yep. Oh, yeah, if you're just looking at Chapter 3, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's also Shadow Spear. Uh, Mike, did have spear. Mike did pick up Shadow Spear. I'm oh, sorry, not Mike. Uh, Alex did pick no. up Shadow Spear. But yeah, there's really nothing much going on in the way of the of Chapter 3 of... So had a couple of small conversations. Max kind of audible a couple times with his plan. Like at one point he was looking at just going mono green, elves yep. into the big stuff, and then he kind of like lost some green cards that he really wanted, and he yep. kind of went back and forth. Um, the card he really regrets not getting is he misprioritized Force of Vigor. Did that even go? Did we see that card? Yeah, it went. Cody took it. Okay. Um, Cody, really only thing he... Is, Super unhappy he missed was Brainstorm, he said. He's worried he doesn't have enough card draw. Okay. I can see that. Uh, and there's no real way to upcycle Baleful Strix or Ice Fang Caudal through the list. One of the things I was curious about in Max's list, and I mentioned this as I was going running down everything, is you have Tooth and Nail, and you have your Eldrazi, but you have no way to give them haste. Xenagos was not picked up. And... and once their egg- in a field like this, I mean, so Kyle can Supreme Verdict, but like, uh, unless they're going to win the next turn. So if you choose a nail for him, basically you're saying win next turn or die. Yes. So, and I think that's fine. I, I don't, I, I just think it was possibly an oversight. So, yeah, no, I agree. The, I, I mentioned like Sam gets Blightsteel Colossus. So that two card, or you could, that three card combo is out the door. But you still have the opportunity to pick up World Spine Worm with Xenagos and three card somebody out of the game. But you have these other Eldrazi that you could still tooth and nail Xenagos or Kiki. Uh, no, you can't Kiki Jiki those two. But just haste and blood out, you know, somebody out, out of this game. So I don't know if tooth and nail is just an oversight. No, sorry, not an oversight, but just a card that Max might not have been thinking of when moving through the build phase. Sorry, the draft okay. that makes sense. Or, or just decided to pick it up at the end. Because even if you go with the L package, this is what I was saying, you can go either way, but you can't go both. You can't right. play the sneak and show package or the sneak attack package and the tooth and nail package. It doesn't work well together. Uh, so we're going to have Cody versus Brandon to start. Yep. Okay. 